The Levels Podcast. I am Justin Horro. That is the triple OG and that beautiful looking man <laughs> with the stash of doom is TNT. Sideburns are good. They're grown back. This is round one review time, boys. Uh, once again, if you listen to us, if you listen to us on the first episode, first of all, thank you. So grateful. Went through all the comments. Everyone was positive. It was good vibes all the way through. Um, really good. Yeah, we're stoked with the views that we got on the first episode as well. But this show is about talking sports, predominantly NRL, obviously, to kick off the season. Um, there was plenty happening in round one. But all the good stuff, the stuff that we need, go on, like the videos, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. We're working out the kinks into um, my own profile, so I'll get in there. I love replying to all the punters. There were so many comments last week that I want to get to that I'll get to uh, this week for sure. But boys, um, oh, and as well, the mo- most importantly, if you're on the Apple or Spotify platforms, make sure you give us a five-star review. Tick that up. Um, but boys, actually, I've got a formal apology. Come on, give it to me. So before no, we get want to hear it. before we get in the show, look, there's obviously been a lot of drama around. Um, you know, people you know been asking us what's been happening. Um, so I thought I'd just come on here and apologise to the punters. You know, just let them know where we're at. And uh, I think the most important thing to uh, to realise, Mace TNC, it's round one. Relax. We didn't have the best week on the punt, but. That's if you're following our Bets Friends channel at the tab. We let the punters down. We didn't do well enough, but I don't think there's anyone out there who can glaringly say that they had... We alluded to it last week that we were we didn't mind the Dolphins, we didn't hey, mind the Broncos. Make your own, make your own mind up, but you know what I mean. Like I told, I, I we told the people, don't be shocked if the Dolphins yeah. come away with the win. Don't be shocked with Brisbane have a ma- if we're talking here now like we are now. Brisbane winning, we said that, but we're like, you know what, we're going to go with the with the favourites and thinking, you know, everything's going to go all right. But like, that's the thing, things happen round one. Anything can happen. Well, yeah, like you said, if you listen to the episode, Mace, we both said, I think, you know, I wrapped up the Broncos Panthers games by saying we probably think Penrith were going to win, but we wouldn't be surprised yeah. if Broncos win. So, uh, before we get into it again, we're going to pump up. We've got. Because we had such a bad round, I spoke to the, the people at Tab, the people that look after us, our partners. They're going to give us some exclusive odds this week. You know, I'm going to devil, maybe look at a same game multi, uh, maybe look for an anytime try scorer. But they're going to boost the odds because they want to look after the punters. They want, they want the punters to fight back in round two, like a couple of these teams that lost in round one. So for this week coming up, when you watch the preview show, make sure you go on our channel, after that, and then we'll have exclusive Bets Friends odds in our Bets Friends channel. That's Levels Podcast on the Tab app. It's the new, it's the new happening thing at the Tab, Mace TNT. And we're going to get boosted odds. So what that means, OG, just say you, you potentially maybe a try scorer is maybe Tommy Turbo is paying two dollars. Just say right, Tommy Turbo right. had himself a day out first try against the Bulldogs. Maybe he's two dollars. Well, because. The tab want to look after the punters on behalf of us. Maybe they boost it up to threes, maybe fours. I'm not, I'm not the one uh, making the decisions there at tab, but I'm saying you're going to get a boost. So that's how we, how we repay the punters. Shout out to our partners at tab, our uh, Diamond Tina Media for looking after us here and uh, supplying us with the podcast studio. But enough on that. Let's roll into the weekend, Mace. Yep. What was... What would you say... Um, was your the most important round one had so many storylines what was the storyline what was your main storyline of round one? Oh, the storyline um, I suppose Wayne Bennett just that the thing on Sunday was special watching that whole game I watched every single game and I was like you know I expected that from South I expect that every team was like you know pretty expected the Broncos against Penrith didn't really expect that but mm. I expected the Broncos to be really competitive they ended up getting that win but like the Wayne Bennett factor still exists, doesn't it? You know it does. I mean? Like the, that aura going against him. He did it. He did it in what? 1988 against Manly. That was the first time he did, he did the Broncos, I think. 
And yeah, he did. Manly. Yeah, against Manly. Manly, he said that after yeah. he said that and in the that in the presser, 36, 36 in the best press conference ago. of all. Typical years Wayne. Ago, typical Some Wayne is the king. And I just thought, you know, it was just everyone just needs to bow down to that man. You know what I mean? Like they they do anyway, but there's a lot of media sort of people. You can see a lot of the people in um. He had a crack at in the media, which was fucking hilarious. I love it, mate. Mm. I used to, used to love doing press conferences with him, mate. Um, but he, yeah, I just think... Did, how, many, just, how many of those are you? So I, did you Newcastle I did a couple. So yeah. I was like, so he used to go, yeah, come with me, big fella. I'll show you how it's done. Does he, does he give you any prep before he goes in, what he's going to do? He, he, just goes, tap, he was tapping me under the shoulder. Yeah. Right? I, I'm under the shoulder. On the leg. On the leg. And uh, I think we won. So everything was all good. You know, Newcastle media, love it. You know what I mean? But like, they had, they were bagging us for a couple of weeks, you know? And he's like, he just let this guy talk. It was the biggest fucking longest question of all time. And he knows what I'm like. I get excited. I want to fucking answer him. He just like tapped me going. And he goes, what's, 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 what's the OG do it pretty much? You yeah, know? And I was yeah, just yeah. like, he's got hit him with the fucking longest fucking question. He goes, no. <laughs> Cut him down. This guy would have been fucking Bill nasty. Belichick vibes too. But just fucking Bill Belichick him massively. Yeah. Couple of little answers. And he wouldn't let me talk. So what do you think, Willie? He's just like, Willie's not talking. You know what I mean? And then or next, or if he, he might let me talk, he yeah. might let me that, let me answer that question. But he yeah. just, he, it's a fucking game to him. Yeah, it is. I swear he has these guys. It is like, a part of the game, man. It is a part of the, the game. media for sure. And he fooled everyone until social media, until everybody started talking about how great he was and how, like, what a great person he is. But it's still that old side of the media that don't like him. You're going to have those old blokes who are about 60, 70 years old. They're just miserable pricks that don't, haven't done anything near what Wayne has done. You know, yeah, but, but everyone well, and, loves him. And well, and to to be fair, um, if you've got a run in with Wayne, that's going to sell. That's going to yeah. that's going to get headlines. Obviously, Buzz is the one that comes to mind straight away. He's always looking to attack him as much as he can. There was the reporter that in in that news press yeah, on what the was weekend that about when he went up the cage so, or something. Yeah, so he um, questioned. He was the one who brought out the headline about Wayne not being there. At the games, oh, he, at the trial games. At the trial games. Yeah. So uh, Wayne said, I'm just not going to answer your question. So let's just get this straight, right? Wayne Bennett doesn't turn up until January. Yeah. He doesn't look at the six or seven weeks before Christmas and he doesn't give a fuck because that's all fitness based and everything like that. And I'm pretty sure he still does that. Mm. He rocked up in January. Trial games doesn't mean much to him. He cares about what's happening right now. Judge him on the rounds fucking one to 26. That's how he gets judged. That's how he gets paid. You've got how many S&Cs and high performances and assistant coaches, assistant coach here. There's so many people out there. The head coach is the big dog who controls everything. Yeah. And that's what he does better than anyone. Any up-and-coming young coach who wants to aspire to be an NRL coach or a great coach, you've got to take that out of his book. Yeah. You know what I mean? The Wayne Bennett sort of philosophy, the philosophy that he has. He's all about his players. They all love him. They all want to play for him. He controls the whole club. Then you take your Craig Bellamy's, yeah, that sort of thing. Then you take your Ricky Stewart's. You, know, you take little bits They've all got of their everyone. strengths, They've don't they? They've all got their strengths, you know yeah. what I mean? Because they've all come from like either the Tim Sheen's mould or the Wayne Bennett sort of mould or the Brian Smith. So they're three of the big trees that come down from coaching. They've all trickled down. You know what I mean? So you take Wayne... I mean, Craig Bellamy's probably been the best disciple. Yeah, for sure. Of, 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 um, of Wayne. You know, he's, he's gone down to Melbourne, created his own culture. Everybody, like, you know, he's won. He's got, he's, he's very beloved, but he's fucking way more intense than Wayne. Well, that's funny, eh? Because like, when intense. you look at it, obviously Wayne's the biggest thing on Wayne. And Mark Nichols said it in an interview a couple of weeks ago. He said, like, Wayne did this at Rabideau. So, like, I don't know why everyone's surprised. Maybe because it's Redcliffe for a new team. Yeah. People don't expect have the different. Don't players. But Bellamy's different, like, obviously, from, from an outsider looking in. I haven't worked at Bellamy. You've probably done yeah, some uh, Origin yeah, stuff. Origin it and, seems and like Australian he's super teams. detailed. So, so it's funny that he come from him at the Broncos to being who I think he was his essence his strength yeah. coach at one point yeah. at the Broncos yeah. to to how structured Bellamy is yeah. and it works for him it's just and like there's different ways to coach and, and mental and the sports sure. science and everything that comes into it I remember being in origin camp and he had a psychologist with him right so Billy brought a psychologist in that would look at all the players. Mm. So he was studying our body language. So when Belly was talking, the psychologist wasn't looking at Belly and how he was saying anything. He'd be looking at our reaction to see if we were engaged or not. Yeah. If people are, if people are just looking at the ground, if people are just sort of doing this, or they're really engaged with what Belly's saying. So that's Wayne doesn't how, need that because he's already Wayne, doing that. Wayne, yeah. So Wayne is when Wayne talks, you're engaged. Yeah. So Belly just tests himself all the time. Yeah, so he yeah. wants to, he's a bit more bit more into that sort of science and everything into it and the psychology of it where Wayne sort of he started that shit you know what I mean just naturally he was always about that he's like a psychologist he's like your, he's like your dad he's like your, your brother everything like that all rolled into one so 
Yeah, I think he's he's the he's the pinnacle of coaches. Yeah, for sure. But oh, yeah, he might, was, so he was my take of yeah. the whole weekend. Yeah, it's, just a, his it's a great one. It's a great his, one. His brilliance of coming from, you know, everyone bagging, bagging him, not being able to, not him not being able to jag any like have massive profile players and all this sort of shit. Fuck it. Look well, what he did. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, lean into a bit of Wayne, Uncle Wayne. I'm going to lean into like, it's round one. My biggest takeaway is everyone chill. Yeah. So it's like round one, there were fans, you know, whether the dogs fans from the Manly, uh, yeah. A performance Roosters fans Going up against Redcliffe Supposed to be Probably the biggest un- Well they were The biggest underdog With our friends At Tab of the weekend uh, The Penrith Panthers They get beaten By the Broncos At home After the performance Against St Helens In the Challenge Cup And I'm like Newcastle you, Newcastle you fans know, you, know the, you know the reason is Mace too Yeah Yeah Newcastle A little bit They were favourites so, Over there so, probably, probably Newcastle And the Tigers are probably a little bit more concerned because they were more coin flick games. Okay. But I still think, you know what it's like, Mace. Round one, everyone's pumped up. Everyone's best 17s available to a degree. You know, mm. and there might be a few changes here and there. But it, it didn't matter what team. I played, I was lucky enough to play six years, three at Para, three at Manly. I thought I was going to win the comp in every single one of those seasons. Yeah. Whether that was... Um, That's the mindset you build in the preseason, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Because you come off, you, you know, you're pumped up. Everyone's had a mad preseason. And we talked about this, you know, when we did the breakdown at the back end of last season. Teams don't find out who they are until at least weeks five or six, until injuries start to happen, mm. until, you know, someone's fallen out of form a little bit. Um, you, then you really start to be tested even more so as it gets on to origin when you start... Yeah, you know, troops start dropping out, you know, mm. like then you start getting tested. Your squad members, 18 to 23, what are they going to offer you? How, how deep are you? Because generally, like when you look at it on paper, you put the teams on paper, everyone's mm. got a pretty good start in 13 yeah. and then there's even a few more benches that go, all right? So I think with, everyone just yeah. chill. I think, every, one. Like, I think how you assess a club and teams now, like just say individually, I reckon you give them five rounds. Yeah. Just say if you're not the cream of the crop, if you've got these mediocre sort of players, you know, sort of like... You had it. You had a, You know they had great preseasons. They did this. You know all that. They'll give them five games, and ten games is usually where you know where you're at. I think ten games. You go. Yeah, this is. We can. We can make a run for this. Yeah. We all like, get our shit together, and we don't have any injuries. And you sort of know what sort of team you're about. It'll take about ten games, I reckon. But individually, you can start going. Ah, fuck. You know, he's not that dude. Yeah. He's not that dude. I thought he was in the preseason. After about four or five four weeks. Four or five for sure. games. I'm like, yeah, because yeah, you, you'll probably get about, as I said, five. Because if you play like two really shit ones and three bad ones, you're done. It's funny how, like, you can. That's how you're done. You can forget, right? So you mm. can get into preseason and, um, yeah, someone could throw up mad chat. And then you're like, oh, yeah, fuck. I think he's in for a big one. He's like, fuck. Mm. As I said, Mike, he got this, me again. This is my first he, preseason. He was right? all that chat from preseason. Yeah. Fuck, so he's still is, the same yeah, dude I'm, as last year. I'm in year. that position, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm at training. I hear a lot of things being said, and I'm like, you know what? You know, I'll, I'll hold you accountable when the season's on. Mm. And the season started now, so I take receipts and I listen to a lot of things that guys said throughout from November from November seventh. That's when we started preseason. All the way till now, and I, I remember I've been in a lot of these meetings, so I'm like, I, I know what you said, I know what you're about, so I want to see it now. This is where you earn. This is a performance-based system right, we're in, right? Performance-based business. So your your performance is on the weekend. So you're like it's like you're an artist. You get your chance to do it. You perform on the weekend, and your 80 minutes. You get every fucking ample opportunity to perform at your best for that 80 minutes, and that's what I look for. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's not training anymore. Everyone can have the fucking best training sessions in the world. That means shit. You're getting judged on a performance at Saturday or 3 o'clock or Saturday or 7.30, Friday night. We're judging you and the people at home are judging you and all the ex-players and the fans and all that sort of shit on your performance. They don't see what the fuck you're doing at training and they don't care. That's you know, what I'm, it's a performance-based system that we're in. Yeah. And you know who performed on the weekend, Mace? A new segment to kick off our reviews from every round. We're going to give you our Derg of the week. <laughs> yeah, so dogs. we know these are guys that obviously performed. Guys have been about that life. Guys are about it in round one. Mace, new segment this year, Derg of the week. We said we're going to mm. implement it. We talk about Dergs all the time. Who is your Derg from round one? I can't go past. I mean, I had a, I, there's some 
the Ruben Cotters, I thought he was up there. He was in everything. He was in everything. Kafusi, I love what he did. I reckon yeah. he set that standard when he hit the fucking cheese and didn't give a fuck, walked over him. Kick, chase, whatever it was, you know, next play. But I can't go past Cam Munster. Doug. He's a dog. He's a dog. <laughs> Shout out to the Prez. Oh, man, he had a compound. Shout out to the Prez Shout sharing out. the Levels Network too, oh, showing us man. love. What a... Like, I just look at him. I love, I love him anyway. And I reckon he's like a, been a top five fucking dog for like his whole career. Yeah. He just plays like just all the real little things and he personifies what Melbourne's about. And that's that. And what um, Billy was saying after the game just personified him and what Melbourne are all about. You know what I mean? He expected him to come back mm. on. Fucking like compound fracture. Three weeks out. Yeah. Sing, you know what I mean? I think, you know, I'm spewing that you're out for this week. <laughs> I'm fucking really shattered. Compound fracture on his left, and he attempted two more tackles. Still while trying to pull the fucking thing back in. People thought he was going to go to hospital, all that sort of shit. Bang. He's a 50 50 to come back on. Melbourne system and that, what the culture that they've built. Yeah. He's like, I'm fucking going on. There wasn't even, he wouldn't even have questioned it. He didn't even get look it, like it was hampering him as look, well. He goes, get it back on and he's fucking, and, he's, and it's not like he shirked it. He's in there making fucking tackles, catching balls, soft hands, passing the ball like nothing happened. There's not once where he's like, where I was look, watching I was watching him after going. Oh shit, it's a compound fracture yeah. in his left fucking, in his left, whatever the fuck that is. Yeah, wedding finger. Wedding finger. Um, mate, I, nothing but respect for you, Prez. Love the that, Prez. That performance is outstanding. That's why he's going to go down as one of the greats. We we're supposed to play golf the next day too. I was spewing when he broke his hand. Well, yeah. I reckon he could play one-handed. Yeah, he probably could have. He and probably could have. And dust you up. <laughs> he would, and he would have done both, yeah. Um, my one, you mentioned him, Mace, just in passing a little bit there. Stands out from yesterday. It's still so fresh in my mind. Felice Kafusi. Mm. Dog, do, absolute yeah. dog performance. Um, he set the tone straight away. You could tell his body language. You know, you get a read on these sorts of players, mate. You know when like fucking yeah. alpha dogs are ready to get mm. after it straight away. You can see he was like, there was an extra, fo- uh, maybe because in the Melbourne system, there are so many stars. You sort of don't really lock in yeah. Felice too much, um, despite what he's done, playing for Australia, Tonga, Australia, all of it. But when he hit cheese, and we mentioned it before, me and Mace were driving in before, but... When he hit Cheese, when Cheese was trying to take over on that Radley roll, not only just like next job got up, they end up chasing down, I think. They nearly scored a try on it, but maybe uh, someone come over from the right side. Maybe Teddy or Jackson Paul or come over from the uh, right-hand side and dives on the ball. Um, and then backing it up, the maybe if it wasn't the next set, it must have been the second set. Cheese plays a little bit early this time. You know, obviously having a look for his old mate from Melbourne who's just got him... Because Cheese was hurt bad too. Got him good. Because Cheese is a, fucking tough, Cheese is a dog yeah, for getting back up too. Dog. But he played a little bit early because he's, man, fuck, where's Felice at? Herschel's. Bang, straight into Egan Butcher. <laughs> and like... And, and, then, and, then he, and then he dogged him. Yeah. And then he's over top. Yes, that's right. And then Kez comes in, Luke Keary comes in and pushes him. What are you going to do? And it's like... No. No reaction. Yeah. Like... And it, then, was, it was the no reaction thing that got that's me. What, that's like, what throws. That's what throws people because like Kez wants to stick up for his boy. He's got a young buck. Egan Butcher loves Egan Butcher. This is Felice Kafusi. He's a fucking dog and he's been around for a minute. So he comes over the top. He gives him a little push because Kez is about it too. He doesn't mind getting yeah, in there too. A nigga. But you go. There's not much more you can do, man. It was clean. It was an error. He didn't rah rah. He just good. He just got up and stood over top of him like a fucking yeah, proper fucking dog. dog. And then he just walks to the scrum. And I was just watching him the whole time. <laughs> Anytime they cut to him, I was just like, this is the best. I don't think I've seen... I feel a- the fucking energy that he was doing. Like Mace, he, he was bringing, man, like through the TV. Mace, this, I, I was thinking about it, right? There's been big performances of players like stepping up in big games, but I've never... I, I, I was trying to rack my brain and think of a player that has completely flipped the, motive, the momentum of a game with defense like that gave me sunny it gave me sunny vibes bro yeah, sunny Bill, yeah. it gave me sbw vibes like sunny could use boys would be in a real like i can remember back in those days where you'd be going toe to toe with the penrus or the roosters of the world and then sunny would just come up with a with a hit and maybe another one and just completely change the yeah. fabric of the game he's um, just got that he's got yeah i've never because fleece is not a known 
hitter. Like well, with, with, with the rules been, too, it doesn't allow it anymore either. But mm. both shots were fucking super clean. Reminds me, I just say the different team. You've seen the Redeem team when Kobe Bryant went straight through his ex-mate's team, his yeah. teammate, Paul yeah. Gasol. Yeah, yeah, remind me of that. And then they just went fucking. Oh, he, he just went through his fucking one of his best mates' That's chest. A great comparison. And he just went, you know, fuck it. We're here to play. And we're here to win. And then they all just went fucking. Let's go. Fleece yeah. is willing to do that to his ex-teammate that he's yeah. won That's two or three point. premierships with. He's ready to go to war for the fucking Dolphins. And then everyone just went, well, let's fucking go. Yeah. You know what I mean? I reckon it was just a massive moment in the game. When he hit cheese and then the effort after, didn't give a fuck, just next play. Yeah. Next play, chased the kick down because they, someone kicked it through. They, they, they'll huff some for the ball. Got the guy, got, got made the next tackle. Done. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But that made all the Dolphins boys and all the guys that are fucking sort of questioning what we're about, that's what we're about. Just by his teeth. I'll tell you who was questioning it as well That entire left edge For the rest of the game yeah, too they're watching Every the little I'm ribs. telling you man Like And it's not Having a crack at the boys He legit changed The, the trajectory of the game Where yeah. it was going Like the Roosters Were relatively comfortable All right. They were playing Roosters style of footy I think the, the biggest thing We'll get to the breakdown Of the game Is they are playing Those nice little Early shape And then they all just You know All it takes is Just to have a little Quite, quite Quick little look. You know, someone's hunting from the inside and trying oh, to break it. Mate, ribs. it was unbelievable. It was um, shout out to Felice. He's mm. that dude. He's a dog. Couple of great dogs. I also yeah. just want to give a shout out to. This is just one. We'll do one each. But if there's someone that sort of stands out and for me, stood out in a in a, in a, in a losing team, and we'll losing get to the Bulldogs team. as well. Man, Reed Marnie was a dog. Yeah. In that game, like he's the skipper. He's all about it, mate. He's all business. He personifies what a bulldog yeah. is. Gritty, doesn't give up, non-stop energy, all about the all about the club first sort of mentality. Wants to get other players better. All the way to the 80th minute. All the way, man. When the when the him game Ma- was clearly gone. King. Yeah, Max Maxi King, King was impressive as they well. They never stopped, bro. Max King played 40 minutes straight on Saturday and a quick fucking little quick turf out of, at uh, at Brookie. Yeah. Three o'clock, about 28, 30 degrees. You know what I mean? And he just fucking non-stop plays. That play before half time. You see it? Yep. He grounded the ball. Like we had no right to be there. Yeah, absolutely no right to be there. That could have been eighteen six. We're yeah. in that game for the whole. You know, we, we probably we. There's a lot of things to learn from that game, but we do have fucking grit. and We got some balls. We got that. So we got yeah. some players. It was tough some to do. Our, it looked like tough key, conditions. Some of our key players they had some off games. I don't think you'll ever see some players. Those key players that we're talking about, you never see them have an off game like that. Yep. The greats don't do that often. They'll do that about sixty every sixty games. You know what right. I mean? so, we'll talk yeah. about more of the game as we get into it. TNT, welcome, welcome to the show. Hey mate, what's happening? Uh, let's get into the stories, brother. No worries. Bit of a post-game bust up between uh, Jamin Salmon and Jerome Luai that uh, made it onto the cameras. Uh, something to do with uh, playing the blame game for a, for a pass that was on the left edge. Uh, just quickly, am I blaming you for that pass? Luai was heard saying to Salmon. Um, and then Luai said because he wasn't leading, uh, said you couldn't make it because you were too tired. So. Mate, so I'll go to you first. Yeah, I, I don't really see much of this no. being an issue in terms of a, pro, a player relationship point of view, but do you think there's a bit of pressure that the Penrith boys are starting to feel and it's beginning to leak out? Yeah, I don't, like, I don't like the fact that it happened on the field. Yeah. I hate it. I hate seeing that. Salmon shouldn't have, have the fucking right to even say a word to Luai. That's set in the sheds. That's Fucking point, behind man. closed doors. Oh, so did uh, did Salmon instigate it? Did he? Well, not, or even even yeah. if Luai said something, like if yeah. you're Salmon, you got to like just yeah, shut know your role, you shut your in. mouth, yeah. go inside, and then sort it out there. Don't go at him on the field. It's fucking cameras everywhere, mm. and there's like there is levels to shit. And there's a respect sort of thing. You know, yeah, Luai didn't have his best game, but I'm like, if I'm Luai and you're fucking Salmon, shut the fuck up. Yeah. I can say what I want, and like, if, but if it was the other way around, if Salmon, like, if he's the one who come at him, that's way out of line. Way out of line. I'm not mm. sure how it goes. Regardless, the young kid Salmon should know his place and just go. Oh, well, I'll talk. I should talk to you after. Can I talk to you after the game? Have that man to man. And fucking cameras around. You know the cameras there mm. on the fucking field. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you're what are like you, two meters away. What are you doing? You're two meters away. You're still on the field. There's cameras everywhere. You know that. Have some awareness. Or do you want that shit out on blast? Yeah. Like, do you want that? That's you know yeah. what I mean? That's I, that's that's the way I looked at it. I went shut the fuck up. Get inside, close those fucking doors, and then get it, get amongst it if you really got a problem. Never seen that shit ever while I was playing. Ever. I see some players have a little chirp and uh, fucking shut up, man. Talk to you when you're inside. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and that's that's yeah, I'm with you. I think I think that's the biggest thing to miss, and I think people are 
are going to jump on Penrith now. Yeah, um, of course, course they because you know it makes it look worse. They got beat, all that sort of shit. Luai didn't have his best game. Salmon didn't have his best game. Everyone's sort of trying to jump. Fuck it, it's Penrith, man. They'll be all right. But just adds more fucking heat. Well, they're a target. They're yeah. a target now. So when you look at Penrith from the last couple of years, they're the champs. Unshakable. They, they've been. They look human now. What's the uh, What's the word? They haven't been shy from letting everyone know that they're the champs. They've been coming at everyone. Oi, this, oi, this, oi. this is the price that comes with it now. People want you want to see you fail. Fuck so yes. so the cameras want to be there after a loss, after you've just lost be smarter, uh, the boys. challenge cup. Be smarter, the before, boys. You just it's on with your mates. You just got to take it in here. I don't have a problem with the um, argument. On with no you. Way. On with you, mates. Say what you want if, to me. How many? How many fucking t- doors are closed? Yes, you're right. Nothing, else, on, nothing goes outside of those doors. Once That should be a rule. And they're a tight-knit bunch, Penrith, and they should know better than that. Even if Luai said some cheeky to, cheeky to Salmon or some shit like that, Salmon should be like, oh, I respect Luai. He's, he's about that sort of shit. I respect him. He's, he's up there. I'm still playing off the bench. Got to earn my fucking stripes here. Yeah, great point. You go back in the sheds. You fucking, if you've got a problem then, have a deep breath, debrief a little bit. If you still got a problem, then have a word to him. Don't fucking say it on the field, kid. Just... I hate that shit, man. Because fucking, you know, when you're a senior sort of player and you're a big part of like the team like Luai is, you're like, who the fuck are you even trying to talk to me? Mm. That's when you. That's when egos come in. You know what I mean? Like you're a fucking. Be- you're lucky to be in the team, mate. Mm. That's what Luai's probably thinking. And it's just like, <laughs> fuck you. You shouldn't even be able to talk to me like that. And then it, when it would have went, because Luai's quick on the lip. He's yeah. the fucking best. Yeah, yeah, fucking. You know what I mean? so that's Sam, his bread and butter. That. That's his bread and butter. You can't come at him like that. Luai knows that he didn't play. He his was best confused. Game. Yeah, he now was, that you he was now a bit you're rattled. About he was like, he was like, what the fuck are you doing? Because imagine yeah. if in his head, he's yeah. probably thinking what I'm honestly thinking. Yeah. Get the fuck away from me. <laughs> Who are you talking to? It's not like Cleary and him are having a crack at yes, each other. Yeah. That's different. That might that that is said behind closed doors. Well, you know what? This it's a perfect example for what you're talking about here. Last year, mate, you know what, Nath? Nath very rarely gets um, emotional. He no. keeps everything fucking. He's nice and level headed. So last year they played the Knights. I believe it was last year. It might have even been the year before. No, it was last year. They played Knights at, at um down at Newcastle up at Newcastle and the night scored with about five minutes to go. They went in the game about 40 nil. And this is what you're talking about with the respect factor, and this is why it matters. Nath comes screaming over after the left edge had missed the tackle, come running over. He sprayed kicks and mm-hmm. Jerome. Yeah. And they both looked at Nath because of the hierarchy and went, as, as established as those two guys were, they went, Yeah, we're, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Fuck. You know, we, we got, a, they got a bit. I think they might maybe push the pass. Um, I and then they the scored that. Saying. And they scored that set. And then Nath was furious at him. And you're right. There's like a hierarchy. Yeah, he's and, a hierarchy. And, and every team should have it. Now I couldn't ever um, consider saying anything during my period because, like, I was never that guy. But I was never afraid to get in video yeah. uh, if if it like in the right place and environment. Yeah, in Hoss. the right environment. Go like just say if I was caught out, I'd, I wasn't afraid of sticking up for myself in video. Yeah. Like. I wouldn't go calling people out, but I'd go, yeah. man, that's not the way it went down. Yeah. Or if if it wasn't addressed in video, I've I've had the, I've had this conversation a couple of times. I'd go outside and go, fuck. It. For instance, like Hainsy was an example, right? I'm like, me and Hainsy were close as best mates, grew up together. Jared Hain at Parramatta, I'd go, man, you should have had my back there on that one. Like yeah, whatever see, the play you was, see, you see a lot of those character flaws in some people, eh? You know, I'm saying like, Hainsy, but I'm just yeah, saying like in, a lot of those plays you go to war with, those, and are the, like, those shut, are the they shut the fuck up. I'm like. Dude, you, we talked about this before. Yeah, those are the conversations <laughs> back, you should have when you're close. Like me and yeah. Hainsey were close as we could have that. Mm. I go, come on, bro. Like yeah. you missed it. You missed that yeah. one. That's when he should be saying it, Jamin Salmon. Yeah. But it's a learning curve now. Like I said, everyone's out to get them. They're everyone's daddies. Last year, now maybe mm. maybe maybe Broncos want to be your daddy. Yeah, because everyone, yeah. hey, everyone's coming after the. Now big everyone's going to come and after way, him, and, man. The, and you know what? The last four years. Just say it's four years. Just say I think they've lost like just say maybe maybe ten or twelve games. Maybe that's probably pushing it. That's pushing it. That's pushing it. You know what I mean? And so they're used to ten fucking max. winning. Yeah, they're used to winning, and they're used to carrying on a lot. The fucking celebrations after tries, the patting on the fucking head, the belittling of other teams. You think they haven't kept those receipts? Mm. 
Fucking hell. And you I know, don't hate him from him either. I don't hate him. I don't hate him at all, but nah. I just know from like when I was coming through and I'm like, I'm like, I want to fuck Brisbane up. Yeah. We couldn't really get over the Brisbane hump. And then we end up some t- t- we end up dusting them up a couple of times. Yeah. Nothing disrespectful because back then you couldn't do that shit because if yeah. you fucked around, you get punched in the face by Gordon Tullis. But Tullis. you let him know. Oh, Gordon yeah, Tullis punched shit out of you. Yeah, true, true. You know what I mean? So you ain't got a, you ain't got a big note. You ain't got a big note. Gordon, GT will fucking put a fucking, fucking 10 piece on you before you even look. So you just know you sort of got him. You know what I mean? But we sort of had the wood on him in the mid 2000s. You know what I mean? But um, we always had really good battles and like you sort of want to keep that. And even against the Roosters, you know, you never really carry on because like. You, they could get you the next time. There mm. wasn't that many dominant sides. We had about six real, six or eight dominant sides. You have a fucking day off, you're getting dusted. So you never really carried on like a fuckwit. Mm. Plus, as I said, there's repercussions to your actions back then. Yeah, you carry yeah. on fucking, yeah. you, you carry on fucking shake me in the back of the fucking head you in 2004, clear. you're getting punched in the fucking head the next <laughs> set. Do you know what I mean? So little halves can come in, <laughs> tap you on the back of the head, push you and everything like that. No repercussions. Yeah. It's a fucking... Different plan. There's a different energy when you get a punch in the head. Not condoning fighting, not bringing it back or anything like. But that's why you see the fucking the carry on after the after tries and they try because they try and get at you. Why do you think they get at Cody Walker all the time? Hmm. You know, Penrith get under Cody Walker. Wait till fucking South play Penrith. Yes, and South this, this and week, isn't it? Oh well, shit. Yeah. Isn't it well, this wait week? Wait till fucking Thursday or Friday then. Thursday. Friday or Thursday? It's the first game, yeah, Thursday. Well, wait till, that, wait till that happens that, and fucking South are on top and dusting them up. They can't wait to get a hold of Cody them. Cody Walker will be <laughs> the fucking... <laughs> and I know Cody's about that shit, mate. He'll be, put, he'll be into Lua, he'll be lipping them all. And if they play to their fucking potential, South, they could dust up Penrith. I'm just looking ahead now, too. That. So that's but what I'm saying. So I'm like, looking at how it's 235 on tab, You think, two, South, you think South haven't kept receipts? For oh, that shit. Know if, that. if Penrith wasn't Penrith in the last three years, South are in three grand finals pretty much. They've been fucking mm. either getting them in the, in the prelims. They definitely win or one. They're in the, or, or they're, they're getting them in the grand final. They definitely So they would have been in two or three, right? Yeah. So, so Penrith's been there fucking, you know, in, in just say in two or three years when South aren't as dominant, they're like, fucking Penrith. They're the ones that kept us out. You know what I mean? So now yeah. they're, they're that side this year. South have got that potential to go fucking next level this year. Yeah, and I, I saw it on the weekend. They I'm looked like, sharp, didn't they? They look sharp. And I'm like, this week would be like, that's fucking, doesn't matter when they play him, they want Penrith. And they want, him see, they want to see him on their knees. I know, that's the mentality that you have when you get dusted by a team that are fucking better than you, superiorly better than you, and they fucking know it. And they let, and you, they know. let you know. As I said, like, just say when you were better than teams than when I was playing, you didn't let them know because like, there's a bit of respect there. You know what I mean? But now there's the respect thing's gone because there's only one way to get under the other, the other guys now it's this mm. talk your shit boys I love yeah. it and so do I alright TNT what's next a lot of chatter regarding the independent doctors and Ooh, the HIAs yeah. and it's only week one so Seb Chris for the Raiders <laughs> Callum Pong for the Knights both ruled out for the game or at least a 15 minute period you had um, and the Bulldogs who's your, your winger he come off Karaz. as well Karaz come off with 15 as well nothing nothing in it Sorry, TNT. No, you're right, mate. Um, Ricky, in one of his trademark blow-ups after the game... <laughs> He's the best. ...said, do you think I'd let a player play if, I, if they had a concussion or is concussed? I don't just trust players' comments when they come to the sideline in regards to that. Is that what Ricky said? That's what Ricky said. <laughs> Ooh. So... <laughs> He uh, definitely I'm not, has. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm believing you, Ricky. He definitely has. <laughs> Sticks, Sticks was... He was aiming at something. Sticky, here. let me back on when Kid will hit me. <laughs> Oh, was that that game? Was Sticks your coach then, was he? Yeah, but back then you could. Yeah, I know, but it still... Fit, it was good 45, 50 later. I was I, back on. I, so, so... <laughs> With a fucking fractured head. <laughs> <laughs> so he's uh, obviously alluding to this day and age, yes, probably Maze. Just but, you, Sticky. I love you, mate. But we love you, Sticks. But he probably still would. <laughs> like, don't you... If you, you can fucking I mean? run, you're on. If Sticky's like that sort of dude and like... He just... Like, he's so competitive that... I don't know. I just feel like... There's a little bit in it with him too. Obviously, he had a bit of a crack at the uh, NRL and RLPA. He brought the RLPA into it, which was... What did he say? So he basically talked about... He's, well, the claims are the NRL and the RLPA don't trust coaches. And then he's talking about the collective bargaining agreement that's happening. So really? The RLPA don't trust coaches? Is that what they said? Well, he's, he's saying that, that the coaches, the they've, been, they've been at the forefront place. of all the changes, basically. So, But there's a little bit of a... 
He's trying to have a bit of attack because of what's obviously happened. So you've got to read between the lines of Sticks. Sticks is passionate. He's trying he's to got, push he's his agenda. A, he's got an agenda. He's got an agenda. Like everyone's got an agenda. RLPA's got an agenda. And, you know, with regards yeah. to pushing, trying to get the best possible return for the players, yeah. therefore Sticks is playing the game because therefore, you know, like contracts and, and all that sort of stuff. But um, let's get back to the actual drama. And, and the drama is the HIA. I wrote down in my notes. I was watching, obviously, watching the um, the Warriors Knights game. I'm KP. not saying I'm not saying the Knights would have won. With they, they would have had a more of a chance. They they, they KP, definitely were a better chance with KP, KP on the dude, field. Man. And this is where I think the NRL have to look at it. I didn't know until watching the coverage of I think Braith was doing Fox League with. Doing a good job too, bro. Shout out, BA. Looking, looking sharp, the Greek um, god. He had uh, Mick Ennis maybe and Corey Parker on. I didn't realise they don't have an independent doctor at every game. It's fucking stupid. How is that? How it's is B that? grade. Our game's worth billions of dollars and this guy's sitting at home pretty much having, probably having a couple of beers watching Super Saturday judging <laughs> fucking, judging games. <laughs> get at the fucking game. <laughs> Can we not get? Can we not get? Uh, how many guys? Eight fucking doctors. Yeah. At a game. How much would that cost? Eight dollars. Oh my a god. A consultation for a fucking doctor. Fucking consult. What is it? Seventy five bucks. Use your Medicare card. <laughs> <laughs> can the clubs use their Medicare card yeah. and go down to the fucking local GP and come in and just independently isolate? I mean, identify someone when he's knocked out. Bulk Probably bill the doctors for a doctor. Can you bulk? Can you bulk bill? <laughs> Can the NRL bulk bill the GPs? <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> is that how fucking tight we are, PBL? Come on, bro. Surely there's some uh, um, some mate. Surely there's some doctors out there who can just ring the NRL and go, oh, I love the game and I'm a doctor and I will assess fucking all these guys' head injuries. Do you know what I mean? I'd love to. Yeah. There's got to be like, someone there. There's got to be like eight, there's got to be at least eight doctors in the whole nation to come in there and just go, you know, I'm pretty good at this sort of shit. I'll do this. And you can fucking pay me $1,000 a fucking game. Who cares? It'd have to be Cash job. Just a cash job. Just cashy. C- cashy. No, yeah. Not paying tax. He's not <laughs> no. paying... They don't pay tax. Don't worry about the but a- I'm just saying, all jokes aside, yeah. I think you could do that if they... if they, they They've got to have it because you, you otherwise... They have, have to. Otherwise, you're going to have these conversations all fucking year. It's not good enough. It's fucking Bush League. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's not good enough. These guys... Well, the Kalen one was bad. The Kalen one was... I don't know if they're just so if there's an independent doctor sitting back assessing all the games. Obviously, they pay him to 100%. I don't know if this is right or wrong, but 100% Kalen's uh, injury history. Yes. Do you think that it, obviously that did? Come it had to it. had to have played a part because and they should yeah, take he laid part on the in that. Ground. They should take. They should that should be taken into account. Yes, I think so as well. He's fucking one head knock head knock away from medically medically retired. Yeah. We don't want that. The players don't but he want was that. sweet in this game. occasion. Oh, I man. know that. I'm just saying, but they're looking after him. Yeah. He's still got hit in the head. Yeah, you know so do I. I. If, if for sure, if he's if he's injured, they've got to protect him, Mace. But but this on this occasion, yeah, he got hit like sort of. It caught him off guard. But it's like. But do you need to get rattled? Ha- but do you need to be rattled and like just like really concussed to be concussed? Not really. It's your brain <sighs> moving. Yeah, but I, I feel like you, I feel like I know. Um, I spoke to Dean Hunter about this. He works with the NRL. There are definitely people within the game that are giving them advice as well. But for me, that was clear cut that he was like, yeah, people get hit, right? So I've been hit, Maze, and you cop a hit and you go, you might look a little bit flustered, but you're like, see a, look, see a bit of stars, a few yeah, stars here and there. Well, no, not even that. You might just go, fuck. Like you get a boot to the head or- It hurts. Or, or it you get a hit. You it get hurts. Head, it just hurts. Yeah, it just hurts. I just got it, kicked you're in not the fucking concussed. head. A knee in the head hurts doesn't mean I'm concussed. Yeah. You know what I mean? A kick in the head hurts. All that sort of stuff. Like even in the throat, the back of the neck or something. I don't know. It all hurts. It's a fucking contact sport. Anyway, a little bit inside sort of stuff, what's going on with the NRL. So just say with with the, the head knocks and the, everything like that, what happened in the States, they got what? Five, they, got, well, they sued them. $8 billion, right? Yep. So since 2014, the NRL has been keeping a lot of medical data, which happens, right? So they'll be keeping medical data because they're hearing whispers. There's been uh, a lot of players, you say, played 80s. I mean, played in the 90s, 2000s, coming up with a lot of, like, potential CTE, so, sort yeah. of all that kind of stuff early on. Grounds for a lot of, A action. lot of shit going on, you know, blame, and blaming the head knocks. Jimmy McManus tried to sue the NRL because the head knocks oh, in yeah. early retirement. So there's a lot of little uh, le- legal things going on. So what the NRL has done is gone on the front foot big time. And everything is recorded, right? 
the little hits and all that kind of stuff. So fast forward 20 years, they started doing this, uh, the medical data. So they have a history of like just saying 25 years. We started recording in 2014. So pretty much anyone from 2014 onwards doesn't have a court case against the NRL. So they don't, so they don't get sued. Okay. That's what this is all about. Yep. All the little fucking head knocks, anything that is, anything that is happening with the head and the brain, done. Protocol, protocol, protocol. The trainers can't come yeah, on anymore and go, Willie, well, you got to come off. And gone are the days where I'm like, fuck off, I'm sweet. Yeah. No. Well, that's what so, KP was trying well, to do. Well, that's what they're trying to do because then old mate who's sitting in a fucking bubble gets the fucking rule on you. Mm-hmm. But he needs to be at the fucking ground so he can proper assess you. Yeah. That's where everyone's getting pissed off. Yes. But I understand what they're doing. They're trying to get... The, but it's a legal thing, man. Yeah. It's a legal thing. So well, it's like they're taking all the data. So in the next 25 years, 30 years, anyone who played from 2014 onwards has not got anything against the NRL. Yeah, that Regardless. makes sense. And that's what they're doing. So any any little thing to do with the head. Head knocks, fucking being hit in the head, take him off, take him off. Protocol, protocol, protocol. You're not getting away with shit. But... I'm against it with this guy. I don't know where he sits. Where mm-hmm. is he sitting, this guy? He must be sitting in the studio of his NRL. He's in the and studio. It, and it, it's not fucking good enough. He's at the NRL headquarters. It's like us watching the fucking game. It's not like he's there watching him off the ball and everything. like that. He, has, he sees as much as we do. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. He's not seeing fucking anything else. Mm. So he needs to be at the ground. So as soon as he... He needs to be running on the field and assessing that player right there and then that yep. doctor needs to if he's doing that. Because yep. why don't you... I know, and that's where Ricky Stewart's coming from. These guys are highly paid. The doctor's there. Of course, like people are thinking, oh, you know, the coaches just want their players back on. The RLPA's doing that sort of shit because you've got ex-players who played in the era of my era where the coaches just went, yeah, fucking go back on. Yeah. Because that was part of the sport back then. It's not now. Yeah. Because the coaches will become... It'll under, be heavily the, scrutinised the coaches will be now. Massively, under, scru- massively scrutinised. The S&Cs, the high performance, the doctors, everything will be under the pump. So they have the best interest for the players right now in 2023. We're not talking about the 2010s. Yeah. So that's where you. it is. So Ricky is fucking sitting there on his heart, on, hand on heart, going, I'm fucking looking after my players. And he genuinely does. And he's fucking, and he is about it. Yeah. Every single coach. You've seen him, he, he looked at Chris. Him, and he's fucking emotional about it yeah. and everything like because he's fucking crazy like that. Yeah, he but puts I know every into- single coach has that mentality now. It's fucking player health first. If you, if you did, like to your point there, Mace, now, like if you're a doctor or a coach, and you blatantly sent your player back out you there now in this day and play. age. You'd, it'd be, it would it'd only take a couple of times before you'd be out of a job. You'd be out of a job. So yeah. these coaches want to keep coaching. The S&Cs, the, the guys who come on. So just say, if I, if I come onto the field, right, and I go, are you good, TNT? And you're like, no, my head's, my, my head's straight off. I've got to bring you straight off. That's, and if I don't, I'm under the pump if yeah. I'm the trainer, the guy yeah. in the blue shirt or the white or the yellow shirt. So there's a lot of shit that goes with it. You think these guys, the trainers, are going on there thinking, oh, you okay? Just fake it. You know, say where you are. Yeah. They're not. The it's room. legit happening. They're asking them the right questions. And if you say, I'm all right, then, they, then they'll assess you and then, then they'll give you that talk. Where are we? What time is it? Where are we? What, what sort of place are we at? Which way are we running? You'll get that. But if you don't come with the right sort of shit and he can see you're fucking going, are you good? You good holes and you're like, oh, I just got hit in the head. Bang, you're straight off. Yep. You don't even get to that. You have to go into protocol for 15 minutes. Trust me, I know all this shit because I ask fucking questions every day. <laughs> to all the fucking, to all the high performance in that. Yeah. Like all my mates, Travi and all these sort of guys, they come on like fucking zap. They got to ask these questions. But if they, they don't come up with the right answer, they have to bring them straight off. The roosters are at the forefront. They're taking people off even before it gets to the point where the yeah. doctors come and pull them off. You see the trainers run on there. I think they come and... Obviously, Radley was an extreme version because he's in a real bad way. But they don't even second guess it now. They just, no. It's like... I don't know if they get a call from Robbo straight away off the, from the top. But every time I see a roosters trainer come on, obviously because the history of... You know, obviously Boyd Cordner, mm. uh, Jakey Friends played there. Kez, like Luke Keery... He had a good year last year, I'd say. He probably, I can't remember off the top of my head whether he, he actually had a HIA last year, Luke Keery, but he's had it in the past. Um, fucking, imagine how worried you'd be if you were that kid and Victor Radley. Well, with them, there's been the trainers, the trainers, yeah. you know, like... Mate, that's, you know, people, people don't understand. Like, that's a whole... Like, even me being back at the Bulldogs, you care about these players so much. Me even being like part of the club and that. Like you feel, just say when, when they lost, it's like, we lost. Mm. You know what I mean? It's not like you're sitting back and you just do a little... Like, you're there every fucking day. You have this emotional attachment. You want to see these kids succeed so much. You know what I mean? So when you see these trainers go on, they're not trying to fucking win because you're the best player and we want you on. 
I used to think that like five years ago mm. because that was my mentality thinking, oh, fuck. They, and, that, and I honestly thought they were just sort of like getting through it. But now everything is a governing body and they hit the clubs with fines and sanctions and all that sort of shit. So if anything goes down, man, that's what I'm saying. The pressure of... Uh, from the trainers, like pressure on the trainers and the staff and the coaching and that letting the player play mm. is fucking massive. Yeah, the scrutiny is too much for the it to not. The repercussions are too big. Yeah, I'm They're with you. Too big. Independent, independent. Uh, but get that fucking get doc- eight fucking doctors, please, eight doctors and get them on ground. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That that whole, one it? doctor can do a big a whole Super Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Time. Does it need double time. Double Does, time. Well, you need. To, you probably need three doctors, four doctors at max, don't you? So like, just say. If you pay, you I don't had know. ten doctors on, and yeah, just it comes, rotated, it comes and they down rotated the time them. And yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like as if North, if if, as if Townsville couldn't go. All right, is it, can we get an independent in the whole independent doctor in the whole of Townsville or Brisbane or Melbourne? You think these one team fucking towns don't have one doctor in that big ass fucking city of theirs yeah. to come in there and independently sit and go through their NRL accreditation, all that shit that takes two fucking minutes. And then go to the game mm. and sit in a in your own little box and watch the fucking game or be on the sidelines. That's it. I don't know what they'll charge. Doctors, I know some doctors, they're dodgy. Could be a cash job. Could be five grand. I'll be asking five grand for a game. Be big doctor. Bunsen, I know that. TNT? Does the independent doctor on the ground fix it? Not everything, but does it fix these situations that we've had it in It fixes the situation where Ricky Stewart's not, think, not trusting anyone. Yeah. And I think it definitely, if an independent doctor was say, all right, come call over, for an example, right? Sebastian, Chris... And Caleb Ponga from the weekend. I reckon if an independent doctor is on the sidelines, bring him over here. Let me have a look at him. Give him like the assessment that the trainers give without the the bias. Yes, Obviously, there's, there's no bias. There's, look, we well, said there won't be bias, but there would be assumed bias from the outside looking in, right? As much as we know, Mace, we've been in, in those locker rooms and we know mm. that your Cubs can't get it right. If you're a... Warriors fan watching KP get assessed by a Knights trainer and you're not... You're not going to go for that, no. You're probably going... There's no way he's assessing him properly. So if he'd come to the sideline, come and got KP on the sideline, give him that quick check that they do, you know, vitals, what day is it, you know, straight away to begin with. All the little... The, the little box tickers that you've got to do before you it's get all, to a point. It's all, it's all they're maybe, asking. Maybe he sends KP back on. Yeah, maybe. That's, but that's, that's all we want. That's but, all we want. But we, we've, we've taken... We're taking that out of the game yes. because he's not there. He's not there. He can't assess the kid. He can't sit there and look in his eyes and he's a professional, right? So he mm. should know more than all of us. We're taking that out because he hasn't got the opportunity to do that. So as if you can't do that, you've got, just got to get eight, ten doctors on fucking... You know what I mean? It's, it's not hard, man. Joey Suali'i has taken up his player option to stay with the Chooks for 2024. Uh, laying any fears of him going to a union. <laughs> Uh, scope. <laughs> you like that one, eighteen? So you waited for my yeah. <laughs> union. Yeah, it gave it a bit of a gap. <laughs> Just give the audience a chance to laugh. laugh. <laughs> <laughs> scope is he outlined his intentions for at least the next couple of years? Well, I think the big one, Mace. You mentioned it as well um, with the World Cup coming up at the end of the year, and, and the flexibility he had in his contract to potentially play in that. I think. Oh, I know of. You know, the people that speak of Joey, I've, like I said, I've said this a couple of times now, had a bit to do with him growing up. Great kid, humble. He loves it there at Roosters. He loves mm. it at Bondi. And why wouldn't you, Mace? All the reasons we mentioned last week, you've got a coach in Robbo who you can tell genuinely cares about his players. Um, they've got real ambi- ambitions to win the comp despite their poor start against Redcliffe. And... You know, life after footy, in and around footy, like Connections, the, no, the networking. No one, no one, even with the money that was perceived to be offered to him. You know, I think that it was alluded to that South were throwing him some money, and and obviously, probably rugby union could have even thrown him more money. I'm not so. I wonder what South were. South were offering what four year deals. That was a fail safe if Latrell went and linked up with Wayne. Oh, I got you. So okay. that was the plan B. So yeah. they basically reached out to Suli and the art dealer. That's fair enough. And this said, look, this is, this is the money that's on offer. Are you willing to listen? Okay. And it was, it was shot down by Suwali's management. Uh, it was really only between the Chooks and, and Rugby Union. But okay. the fact that we've got him for 2024 is a, is a great it's outcome massive. for Rugby League, right? Yeah. I think, he's, I think his mindset might be, you know what, I'm going to just solidify my name and earn everything in the game for like, just say, 
minimum five years, five or six years, give my chance, give myself every ample chance to win a premiership, win an Origin series, play for Australia maybe, keep representing Samoa, all that kind of stuff. You know, I think he wants to really, really make a name for himself in this game. And then maybe when he's over 25, how old is this kid, 22? No, nah, 18, 19? No. Yeah. So well, he is. Yeah. He's got to be 20 this year then. No, nah, because he had to get the exemption. Google him. He had to get the exemption two kids. TNT, get it up. He's he 20 this year. He's 20 this year or 21? No, nah, he'd be max 20. I reckon 19. He's 19. He there turns 20 in August. Yeah, he's 20 this year. Fuck, I was way, way off. <laughs> it's way off. <laughs> Fucking one year. <laughs> anyway. To but, Google it. But... So I reckon he probably like five, six years, maybe say over twenty-five. Oh, probably oh. look for a World Cup that's in about three, three or four years. No, I mean like just say one or two World Cups for Union. So that's like eight, eight, eight years. That's World eight Cup, years. Mate. So he'll miss this one and then he'll time it to get off. Right? Yeah. Is that right? So just say if he goes, so the Union World Cups this year. So the next one in twenty-seven. Correct. So when in does he come off? Or so, when, so when does he come off? Well, no, he, he's he's a year-to-year guy. He's doing. He's oh, doing all his. Fuck! Country. I thought he's doing a multiple year. No, no, no he's, he's doing options. year to year. That's his. That's his play. He's doing the Sunny model already, straight off the bat from a from, as a kid. I'd. Why wouldn't you? Every year. He's I mean, I probably would have locked in three years and then if gave myself. Him? Yeah, gave myself like like two years to pre- to prep for the twenty seven World Cup. I think uh, the unless Bruce he doesn't want to play through. fucking Union. Do you know what I mean? And he wants to just keep pushing the number yeah, up. Yeah, just keep going, just keep like moving mm. the goalposts and just like yep. backing himself, all that kind of stuff. Like, because he knows makes sense. at the end of the day, if league is not working out for him and he just goes, fuck it, I'm, I want to play, I want to play Union. I'll go play Union next year. Yep. He's in that, he's in that sort of, uh, in that position, you know, he's not sitting there waiting on his three year deal, someone have to pay him out, all this shit, all the drama. So if he keeps backing himself every year, all that kind of stuff, like, I don't know. I think that's that must be his mindset, mm. right? Mm. Uh, and like, otherwise, you'd sign at like t- 24, 25, 26, come off 20, you know, like then you can build for that next World Cup. Otherwise, you just, I think he's just playing the moment, every game, every year, all that sort of shit, which is great. Yeah. At least we keep him in our game, mate, because he's yeah. a superstar. Yeah. Imagine, I'm just thinking about like, because you've mentioned Origin before, because I, I reckon he'll stay at Sar. He'll stay at Samoa. He yeah. won't go to Australia. I reckon he's going to stay, play Origin. And then if depends he, what they do with the format. And then if and when with the format depends what for, if it, they play four nations this year, and they do what Australia, New Zealand, England will be some all the four. He's, he's still tier two, no matter what. He's still tier two, but he can't so, play for Australia. He could do. I reckon That's what I'm saying, but I, like I reckon he'll stay. Oh, so if Sam so aren't part of the four top nation four. or a three nations or something like, or he's got to play in the Ashes. Yeah, yeah. If he's got to play in the Ashes and they represent this year, and then fought the then we have a Pacific Cup. He's gonna to have to make a decision there, because yeah. at the end of the day, Australia's a pinnacle. I think I think he'll stay. I think well, it's the decision for him. I th- oh yeah, I think he'll stay. I think uh, you know, going back, I seen him. He went back to Sa- Samoa. Um, it's all about his really legacy too. If he wants to play like ten or f- twenty caps for Australia, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, or could, or, or, could, or could he just wait and then potentially go go and play Union and just play for the Wallabies straight off the bat? I don't know, he could want to be a dual international, all that sort of shit, man. Mm, it's, yeah, that's cool. It's all on your, it's all that's on your, cool. it's all on your legacy at the end of the day when you're like thirty something. Yeah, I played twenty caps for the Wall, uh, twenty caps for the Kangaroos and like 50, sixty for the Wallabies because they tend to play like twelve or fifteen a year. Now I, mean, I don't know, something like I think you'd be thinking of that. I think if you if we pull out a fucking uh, an Ashes tour, which they haven't since two thousand three, he'll be on that. Then he's got to make a decision there. Because he needs to tick that box too, I think, personally. The legacy. He needs to pick the box of the Australian team, mm. I think, personally, to go down as one of the greats. Yeah, that's fair. What do you think of that shot from Wade Graham on David Mawali? That's fucking unreal. Mace message a group show. Oh. He goes, <laughs> Wade Graham, speaking of Dirks. Oh, the fucking... That was one of the best hits I've ever seen. And I was waiting for someone. And Brandy's like, he's old school as well. And I think he said about 30 seconds after, I was just fucking yelling at home going, holy fuck, I was watching it by myself. I didn't know what to say. I messaged the group straight away. I fucking even tweeted it. Yeah, did you? Yeah, I tweeted it. When was the last time you tweeted? Oh, fucking ages ago. I said, what about that hit from Wade Graham? Proper dog. Yeah, (laughs) dog. Just like, that's, that's an old school, that's a fucking OG move. Knew that his team needed something. Moa, fucking pra- bravo to Moa. He straight up and played the ball. And didn't it ended up leading to a try a couple didn't of plays give after. Because yeah. he didn't fucking he he didn't didn't fuck around. Fucking flinch, We're mate. speaking about all the HIA before. Moa, like, because I, look, I'm with a couple, p- 
people who stick up for this hit have been getting hammered a little bit because of the new. Yeah, I, got, I, I don't look at the. So everyone who fucking he, tweets at me, sorry, I don't fucking look at the comments. Yeah, I don't get. I don't get notifications. You fucking idiots. In the in the day and age that we live in, <laughs> and I, I've been a, I've seen contacts like that on a number of occasions. Simon Dwyer. He hit him here. He hits him right in the chest. Even though he left the ground, the thing that's fucked him is he's left the ground. Yeah. But he hit him in the chest. And when people see the head move, do you not realize that's whiplash because someone's just got smacked right yeah. in the chest? Car crash. Like, if you, if you, like, to this day and age now, you can break it down frame by frame. Yeah. And yeah, there might be. I reckon there was a stud on the ground by the end of it. There was a slight glance, maybe like he flicked the chin at the end. But that's because the chin's just gone. Bang! Straight what happens. into the chest. It's called whiplash. It's whiplash. It happens. What happens in a fucking in a car, car accident? Bang! That's what happens, people. So, I reckon it was. Qu- I'm saying it was clean. I reckon but, it was so clean. But he's going to get suspended. Like it was so clean. Saying. But like, I'm not sure if we want that look for the game. I do because I loved it. I love it, and I I'm just like it. maybe the parent who's got a young kid who's an up and coming rugby league player out at um, Mount Druitt or some shit or Newcastle or Cessnock or Toronto yeah. West. Maybe they don't want to see that. Do we want those players but, in the game then? But do, exactly. Or do we my, want my fucking thought, dogs like Wade thought, Graham? My thought, yeah. exactly. I'm like, don't fucking play the game. Yeah. If I had a 12-year-old kid, he goes, I don't want to play him anymore because of Wade Graham's hit. Well, it's not for fucking you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sweet. Go play, Go play it's tennis. A I love basketball. Here's a Go tennis play racket. basketball. Here's a tennis racket, kid. Yeah. Go fucking hit some fucking backhanders. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying that. Like, what, what, Do we want everyone participating in this game? This is a fucking big man's man's game. This is what happens when you fucking step on that field. It's fucking all out. You it's see Jordy, all out fucking war. Do you see Jordy Rupp's up and... Uh, Jordy <laughs> Rupp and have fucking tried to kill drink water. I'm not sure what you did, Drinky. I'm not sure what you did, Drinky. You did something to I him. I know what it is. Because he come in, no, he come in with a fucking massive hit and it wasn't enough. And it wasn't enough. Was it enough? Never enough. No, you want to give him Bang. the two-piece. Oh, man. That two I piece love that feed. shit. <laughs> Drinky got on with the fuck is going on? Yeah. Play the ball, yeah. kid. Fine. Yeah. No fucking drama. How good. I love it. I love that shit. That's I love how the it. game can be played. That's how the game can be played. We don't want everyone fucking participate, participating in our game. Yeah. Just watch the fucking game. Yeah. If you want to participate, the fucking cream always rises to the top. We're always going to get the best. They always come to the NRL. That's the product. If you want to test yourself as a fucking man and in the hardest, toughest sport in the fucking world, you play NRL. Try and make NRL. That's why fuck all people make it. 100%. Wade Graham, fucking in, in, respect, old dog. In saying that... Yeah, I... Oi. No, 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 devil's advocate. No right, devil's good, advocate. Good. I'm just saying that Three these weeks. are OG dogs from the yesteryear. Yeah, I know. So these players are going, Mace. Yeah, I know. Like, eventually... Because Rapana's that guy. Rapana's that, that dude. Ra- he Jordy Ruff's no seven, that dude, bro. 70 debut. Yeah. Played against He's us. He's been around for a minute. Yeah. Wado's been, what? These are, these are 200, 250 gamers. Yeah, yeah. Despite the... Wado's a 300 gamer. Yeah, easily. Oh, well, I probably yeah, he probably is three hundred. But the point of it is, Mace, is that these guys have been doing it for a minute. It's too yeah. hard to change. You can't change. You it. can't change a dog when they've been a dog for fucking ten plus yeah. years. So the game is changing towards. Anyway, that was a monster hit. Two Best. monster hits, and Best. I'm like, it was clean. Holy fuck, they're both clean hits. The second one wasn't from Rob. So I reckon Rob, yeah, the yeah, second yeah. one you can do without. You know, he goes. You know what? You want to give me a week? Give me three. <laughs> <laughs> it's not enough yeah. And I was just like Wow I actually Because I love those dudes I went to, I went to battle Against those guys yeah. And I'm like They're about that shit yeah. I remember fucking 2008 Fucking Freddie goes Spot the fucking six up For Penrith Guess who it was Wade Graham But he was about 10 kilos lighter yeah. Fucking got me A couple of times I'm like <laughs> Freddie Fuck's sake Who's that kid No one even fucking knew And I remember talking to Wade They go Remember yeah. Fucking Penrith Stadium Round fucking 14 2008 Yeah he had a spot I had to fucking get you at the right, You were right edge I was left back bro <laughs> He goes, I had, to get, I had to come at you. I said, yeah, you got me a couple of times. It didn't look big on film, <laughs> yeah. but bang, Just under enough. the ribs. I'm like, I said, yeah, this kick can hit. Yeah. Yeah, and, if, you know? and I'm yeah. like, I said, yeah, now, now I can speak to Freddie and go, fuck him. Yeah. He could hit. That's so why he, Freddie didn't yeah. ask the head coach. Yeah, yeah. Fucking, he's, like, yeah you got to scout, you gotta scout those players, Freddie. He's identifying the wrong spot. Send me out of the dog. <laughs> yeah, um, so. Yeah, mate. But I, I, love, I love seeing it. I love um, just the contact. Even like seeing um, Finucane go at mm. fucking... Going at the young kid, Maxi King, awful. and Maxi King yeah, was going hard. It was awful seeing that the head knock because that could have been really bad for oh, the uh, for, for Totola. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was a bit rattled, but like, see, Finucane just go at him, just like yeah. no preservation for his body. Bang, bro. Head. He, like, he doesn't. He, I don't, he didn't flinch. He yeah. didn't even look. They didn't give a fuck about Finucane. <laughs> yeah. It's like 
But he was like because he slayed all the momentum and yeah. fucking Finnegan's at marker ready to fucking go. Yeah, I was like, that's another dog. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. another guy, old school sort of player who doesn't know any different. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I want to highlight, obviously. <clears throat> Wade Owen, and don't get me wrong, in this day and age, they're definitely getting suspended. So we just want to say that well, I love seeing it. I think oh, you're mate, the same, mate. That was fucking and it was exciting. Wanna, Everyone I, on Twitter, like, regardless of the fuck we want to go by the rules and shit, yeah. but they were all about it. Yeah. The like, OG like, fan. Yeah, but the OG then, fan always, watching that. And it always reminds me how. Yeah. It always just reminds me how, much, how many <clears> scumbags are on Twitter. Just the most negative motherfuckers of all time. Cesspit. Cesspit of negativity. So that's why I get in, boom, tweet, out. I don't get notifications, people, all right? Yeah. I want to uh, also, again, we, you mentioned it uh, briefly there, Mace. Shout out to a couple of dogs. Scott Drinkwater, David Morley, getting straight yeah. back up, playing yeah. the ball. I want to highlight like David. And they're young kids who could stay down. Mm, yeah. Well, that's good because, you know, in this day and age, because of the HII, which could be a benefit as well because, you know, a couple of years, for the last couple of years, we've been seeing people fucking lay down in certain mm. moments like that to get a penalty. Bang, straight back up yeah. to their feet, played the ball. Mad respect. Love it. Let's kick into this round one review game by game. Our Thursday night, Power on the Storm. Storm get it done. Fuck, there's some crackers point. this week. <laughs> yeah. TNT. Ooh. Yeah, there's some good games. This is uh, so straight off the bat, Mace. When we were talking, when we were preview on the game, I was just preview. Sorry, yeah, this is review. This is sorry, review. This is review. So there was, I mean, there was, there was some, some crackers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there it is. Someone, you know, I think I think we, we get a few people in the comments every now and again. I just want to ask the question: Are we Parramatta haters, OG? Me I fucking you? am. Do you hate Parramatta? Oh, mate. I don't mean to be, but I'm blue, must, blue and white. We, well, as if I don't get, as if, mate. I don't hate the players. Yeah. I just my battles, me personally against Parramatta. Of course, yeah. I fucking hate them. Yeah. I don't hate them. That's a strong word. I just, you know, it's, it's a fucking rivalry, man. Yeah, it's the yeah. biggest rivalry in the game, apart from the rabbits and roosters. Comparing dogs don't really like each other. I think I'm... Uh, and it's fucking embedded in us, man, because yeah. it's from that, all that 80s shit. Yeah. You and you had mean? fucking good clashes. some fucking great clashes. Yeah. I, I respect Parramatta, but of course you fucking... You know, if I ask Heine and that, would you love the dogs? He hates the dogs. Or maybe he hates McGinnis. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> Shout out to <laughs> Byron. That. By the way, you look awful, Heine. Awful. <laughs> Get in the fucking gym. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, he's just kicked the feet up, Ooh. eh? How many tinnies do you reckon he's smacking oh, on the break? Mate. He just what's his fault? sponsored by everything. He might be VB. Or I think two he's a new, I think he's, he's a new guy. man. Oh, I think God. he's a new guy. Lay off the new. Get on the seltzers, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does Tui's do seltzers? Because give him the Heine. <laughs> Josh Hodgson. Love you, Heine. You know that. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I think I think sometimes maybe I'm come across critical on Para too because like yeah, we de- I definitely don't hate him. I think playing there as well, word. like I. Uh, I do really want the boys. You had to bad win. memories at the end. That's why. Yeah, and there, so and there bit, is a bit bitter. The, yeah, there was like the exit that sort of never set. It's the only club where I've like, well, Sticky kicked me at like said I wasn't going to play when I had a contract. So maybe that comes across, but I don't mean to be because I got no fucking dramas with these boys. So let's get on to the. So mine's probably directed more at Brian Smith. Yeah, because okay. he was the coach when we were going at it. Mm. You know what I mean? So I was like, I hear a lot of stories and shit. Like, I was like, I don't like, I didn't like Brian Smith. Yeah. He's a champion. I've met him a couple of times. Where you just sort of hold. Back then, you didn't have like social media. You couldn't talk to people. Just yeah, like, you just got to hold that hate. So whatever rumor you heard, yeah. So you had, you had, he doesn't rate you. This and that. Fucking please, I'm going to destroy your team. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I had to. Yeah, in this, in in that, uh, in that day and age too, if there was like a rumor, yeah. then that rumor would last three years. Yeah, you man. wouldn't find years, man. Whereas, like, just say there's a rumor now with social media that ends up being like, oh fuck, you know, yeah, he you can said end that it. Better. You can end it. It. Get, it gets ended pretty quickly, doesn't it? Like back then, then you get these guys from the '80s coming in and telling you how much you should hate para mm. like a david gillespie or some shit like that peter yeah. kelly it's, it's like fuck i need to fucking go at these guys because i'm about that shit i'm about the history of the club and i bought in big time so yeah we don't hate power it's just it's embedded in me all right let's talk fucking positively about power, power then straight off the bat they obviously took a nail to the storm i thought hodgson was really good mace without yeah, being amazing. um like his the Canberra style wasn't there. He didn't overcomplicate it. He didn't try to overdo his hand. I thought he played it nice. Especially you know the one that stands out is that nice little offload. Gets a ball away. Looks out the back. Plays short to Junior. Yeah. Junior goes through and scores. Great um, try from the big boy. Gutho. See, sorry. So that skill set when people when he went through right arm, changed to the left arm. Like you know what I mean. That in, in a balance. He's that got is, it all. That, that skill set. A lot of outside backs can't do that. And that's you talk, talking to a guy who's 125 kilo. Palm, swapping hands this way and swapping hands again and then scoring that try is a skill set like not many front rowers have. Yeah, I'm with you. Anyway, I thought he was impressive if you as understand well. The, if you understand the game and skills, what goes into it, that was fucking, that was pretty. 
anyone outside of probably I thought Josh Hodgson was good. Junior was obviously good. They really missed Junior and Regan when they Sean went off the Lane, field. Lane, they missed. Yeah, they're. Uh, um, I thought their be- I thought their back rows were really impressive. Mm. I like. I didn't Hop want. Good. I didn't. Hopgood was. Hopgood good. was I, I think like I sort of expected. I watched a little bit of footy on Hopgood. I thought Dury was really impressive. Like he obviously had a good World Cup, but I thought it might have just been you know he stand out and in. in Who did he play for, Dury? He played for Lebanon. Didn't have like as uh, biggest stars around him, but yeah, I thought he was solid. I thought he was really good. And um, what's his name? Uh, and then Gutho. I thought Gutho was, was trying his best, just covering up shit like the entire game. But at the end of the day, for me, Harry and Prez, Harry and mm. Munster showed their class. When the game got hard around the 50 or 60 minute mark, it was really in the balance. I think those two players in particular, who didn't start well by their own standards, like their own Melbourne Storm, Cam Munster, Harry Grant standards, I thought as the game got tougher and everyone started to get tired, those two guys started to inject themselves into the Hughes. game more. And yeah, Jerome Hughes. Romy was good Jerome as well. Jerome Hughes on those kick chases, he gets down there, he just he adds another, you know, adds another dimension. He's just got a real calm head. Gets on those little things that people don't notice. He gets the first one down there on a kick chase. If he, if he, him even, if he kicks it, he's pretty much down there first. And Munster's and the other he's way. Down there, you know what I mean? He's down there on Munster's kicks. You know what I mean? They work both really good together. Um, I thought Reg and Paul are outstanding, but I'm thinking if you take Paulo off that field, they become really one-dimensional. Mm. You know what I mean? Like yeah, they were doing yeah. a lot of plays off him. They was hitting him. He was arse up, so he's, he's hitting it back. They were hitting him short. He was playing out the back. So he was like that fucking ball playing lock slash front row, all that he sort to, of shit. So yeah, number where Hop, Hop Good, Cartwright, and all those blokes weren't really doing that. So he had to do it a lot in the middle. So he had a lot going on and killed it. Thought he was unreal. But then he goes off. Who comes on? I couldn't even name the guys. Mm. You know what I mean? Like their bench, their, be- the bench from- their bench, their bench isn't strong. I'm just Jack saying, Murchie. no dis, no disrespect. Jack Murchie played middle for No him, disrespect. I'm just saying what Paulo does and then what comes back comes on for him. Yeah, it's just totally different. And the yeah. energy's all off. And even Reg, all those sort of blokes when Melbourne, they just plug and play sort of players. You know what I mean? I thought Christian Welsh. Shout out to Christian Welsh. Yeah, shout out played to White outstanding. Rhino. Yeah, first Achille, game come back. back from a ruptured Achilles. You think he'd, he'd um. He'd sort of have, you know, about he a looked meter, gas, meter, but he kept meter, on turning meter up. of pace behind. Nowhere near it. He yeah. was coming off his right foot. He was stepping. He had about fucking eight offloads, which were right in traffic, and it was late. They kill you. Yeah. And second phase football. It's they end up, they end, up get, yeah, they end up getting like the guys around the middle, and then Harry Grant like sort of got Harry Grant involved, and then he was passing out the back. Got Munster on the front foot. Got Hughes on the other side. Remus Smith. All that sort sort of started getting those guys involved in the game off those offloads. He was the only one. Like Nas, fuck Nas looked big. Mm. He, yeah, he looked did. like six kilo big, yeah, overweight. Because like, you know when he's fucking jacked and he's been in the gym sort of thing, mate. And he starts off, he always starts off around about that weight. Would well, you think? Do World you, Cup. Do you think he looks more jacked in the sense like... More muscle? Because you don't yes, fucking need it. Yes. No, because I reckon he's expected to play bigger minutes this year now that Jesse and Kenny and Felice yeah, I know on. that, but that's probably so maybe the wrong he's way to like, go. He, he looks like he's in as good as Nick as I've ever seen him. I thought I thought Nick Meaney was... Um, I thought he was great. I, I thought take, that's the best game I've seen him play so at So we'll, I was a bit like, I was apprehensive on him last yes, same so I'm, like, I'm like, well, I need him just to fucking man up and play straight, run hard, do it, and he fucking did. And like you're talking before with Welshie, bringing him into the game with those offloads, he was just sniffing in around That's the run. He did, didn't it? Because yep. he's not that guy who's going to be around the back. No. He's not getting the catch and the ball B line. He's not going to break a three on he's two. He's got a little bit more finesse. Yep. You know, and he's and he's good when it's broken and it's broken play, and he can just dictate around the ruck and try and just go through, hit a crease and just go for it. Quick play the ball, and then they go again. So Melbourne, Melbourne's Melbourne, man. It doesn't stop. I just thought this year they'd really come back to the pack. Probably they, they, they probably have a little bit. They won't be like massively in the top four. They're going to be maybe five or six. But who knows? But this who knows? Be who knows? Wouldn't surprise if they finished fourth or third though. It just won't because surprise of me. class and, because, and coaching. Yeah, exactly. They just got speaking of coaching. Um, Craig Bellamy's streak continues. Mace, when was the last time? The oh, you do your math. I think I think the last time you got beat in round one was against. Me and the Bulldogs. <laughs> the Storm. 2023. Was he the coach of them? 2003. Yeah. Was he the coach of them? Yes. I thought he, his record was undefeated. Was it not Anderson that was the coach of him during that period? Is it Melbourne or is it Craig Bellamy? I think it's Craig Bellamy's got the streak. Check it up, team. Check it. So, but the last time Melbourne were beaten was oh, the three. fucking Triple O G yeah. in 03. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're welcome, Melbourne. <laughs> You're welcome, though. G still not yeah. fucking around. So Is that it? How, when did um, check when Bellamy started coaching? Uh, I think Melbourne. Bellamy started coaching in 04. 
Yeah, yeah. I think he started. It feels 03 or 04. I know. I definitely know it's 04. I don't, 04, think, I don't I think, think he's lost the round one. Might have started 03. Melbourne 03. Ha! It was 03. Okay. So you got him. Yeah, so got he's him. lost one and I then he's been him. undefeated Because I know why. Because the I think the random stats dude, Rando. Yeah, random st- Rando. He's, he's like... Uh, there's only been one guy who's who's um, ended Melbourne's streak, and it was Nigel Bungana, and um, him playing for the Warriors in '99, yep. and then it was like us for the Dogs, and I'm like, he was there in '03. I was yeah, like, okay. yeah, it must have been there because I was fucking playing there. <laughs> First right. game on the Friday night was the Warriors and the Knights, 20 to 12. Obviously, we spoke about the HIA scope, but what else did you see there? Um, yeah, so I said it before, if you if you missed the, the start of the show, I thought KP's HIA really decided the game. Not saying Knights would have won, uh, but definitely no chance without him. He was really starting to find his way into the game. Um, for the positives, you know, obviously going over to the Warriors, I reckon... Wade Egan's going to establish himself into one yeah. of the better nines in the competition. I've been super impressed by... I sort of started to see glimpses of it, glimpses of it at the end of 21. He really took it into 2022. Started this, I wrote this down before he'd even nine. scored... He's a genuine nine. He is a genuine nine. I wrote this down before he'd even scored the try. Um, that sort of sealed the game at the end there. And when I was watching the Warriors, it was interesting to see with... The players that they've bought, I think the Warriors squad is establishing belief in working hard for each other. That's what I wrote down. You can tell there are actions, whether it's, I think it was at the back end of the game, um, maybe Heimel Hunt or, I think, yeah, I believe it was Heimel Hunt was going across over in the left, left side there. Um, Adam Pompey comes over, he hits him. Edward Cossair comes over the top and finishes him off. And in, in years past, Mace, that was, for me, that was going to be a try. Uh, I just think they're really, like I said, establishing built belief with him working hard yeah. in the one percenters. And, and, that, and, that, and, you know, normally I don't take too much out of trials, but it's important for the Warriors because it is, yeah. it's, that's where you've got to set the foundation. It's important, the clubs that are it's important from the clubs that, like, as we said it on the Batuta Advocate, um, the Batuta uh, podcast a couple of weeks ago. Like, yeah. it's important to some teams and it's important to some players. They need those trial games. So... I thought they were good, man. I thought Braden Willie Army really was good. Yeah, shout out to B. Wills. B. B. Wills has been like silky, man. Some of his nice quick passes, like obviously when Braden's first hit the scene, he had this awful record where he didn't mm. win a game in NRL for I think maybe he was double digits. <laughs> he went overseas. We played with him at Catalans. We yeah. get along with him well over there, Mace. But he's come back. He's been in, he's been in really nice. Yeah. Him and Marcelo Montoya. They look good. They're, they're striking up a nice little uh, combination together. Sean, over to the Knights. Sean Johnson. No, Sean Johnson was Shawnee was, was solid. He was impressive. Yep. He actually looked like he was attacking the line. and He, he creates so much, man. He just needs to like do that every single game. They didn't ask that much of him. He just attacked the game a little bit more. His defense was good. Like the beauty of it, early on they had that Fitzgibbon try, which was like fuck awful yeah. from him. But you know, in years past, probably the last year or two, he's probably put his head down as as a as a senior player. I think mm. specifically when he went back to the Warriors yeah. last year. But um, he really just got on with it. Next yeah. job, really stiffened Fanua, up his defense. Fanua Blake was good, man. Yep. Can we talk about that short ball from Tohu Harris? And Tohu Harris there? was mad. Yeah, he's silky. He's got skills, man. They've got a good pack, man. Mitch Barnett was going middle. hard. Murata Nikora. Bunty Foll was good. Josh yep. Curran good off the bench. I think I think I think Joshy Curran's got to find a way to establish himself. Because I thought like, he really arrived a couple of yeah, years ago. And then he's he's, he's got to really be starting digressed. in the back row. He's not a bench player. No, nah. but it's up to him. It's up to him if he wants to start. He's got to be doing shit week to week. Where he's still got a few little niggly things in his game that he's, he's got to sharpen up. But especially when you consider Mitchie Barnett's playing middle, you've got um, Jackson Ford who's come over from the yeah. Dragons and he's doing it realistically well. for me. I think as, as good as Jackson yeah, right. Ford started, yeah, I think he's been good. Yeah. But it's I, one I, game. It's one game. I just, I just think that the potential that Josh Curran has, he he's, adds, he's really got to take he that He adds position. another dimension, right? Yes. You can push, you can push um, who are you going to push back down? Well, Jackson he Ford. He's got to push Jackson Ford to the out. bench. Yeah? To the bench. Because yeah. he's a back row, right? Because yeah. Mitch Barnett's going to stay at the front row. Yeah. Newcastle was all right. Yeah. It was an all right game. You know yeah. what I mean? It wasn't that bad. Yeah, was it, it, wasn't a ma- it wasn't a mad stick. Like, they were going at each other, man. They, yeah. went, they went hard. It wasn't like... Um, I, I just With the Knights, when I was watching, they just, at the moment, and, and it sort of carried on again from last year, they just look a bit disjointed. Mm. You know what it's like when Mace, when you're like... How many times do you see like one player trying to fix it by himself? Yeah, it wasn't sold with Hastings, man. He just looked very like just 
lethargic. You know what I mean? Like, remember, like, with the, with the Tigers last year, you touched the ball 90 fucking times. Mm. That is way too much. You know what I mean? Like, just move out of the fucking way. If I was a front row, this halfback just in the way trying to cross me up and put me under and just get out of the way. You don't have to do all those little plays. But he probably thinks that he has to. Where I think Saifidi and all those sort of boys, they just want to straight off the nine. Yeah. You just support. Well, they, then just those, support. Those you know? boys have got to take ownership and move yeah, out of the way. Yeah, but that's what I mean. The middles well. need to take, take over. When you're playing with the, with the seven who's ball dominant, you know, you need to go, hey, I want it from the nine, not the fucking seven. When we get a little bit, when we get in the middle of the field, maybe push a little, push the ruck a little bit wider, then you can have that shape. Or maybe you just get into that shape where you get the ball, block runner, you be out the back. That's all you needs to be. Needs to be that sort of. You needs to get into that sort of shape and be a ball runner instead of a ball facilitator all the fucking time. They like a bit of punch too when the Saifedi brothers go off. Eh? And they, because there's, Hastings there's an... and Hastings ain't fucking quick. No, I'd fucking mm. dust him up over forty easy now. <laughs> Do you think that the Knights are paying for the fact that they got half their spine late? In the preseason, so obviously Miller um, and a little Hastings bit, yeah, for sure. It's going to take them a while. Combination CD, that's a good point, bro. Um, I will say one thing: when and I mentioned this before, they look really small when Jaden Braley and Kurt Mann are defending next to each other. Mm. You, it's and like when the both Saifidi brothers are off. Yeah, that I mean, they are. Um, they don't shot. They're not like in this day and age. I mean, I'm not having a crack at those plays. In this day and age, players don't shy away from contact like Jaden Bra- Braley makes 50 tackles Kurt Mann gets amongst it but they just don't have the contact and the ruck control that bigger bodies would have so for me I would have especially when the games in the to start the game you sort of I'd, I'd be starting Adam Adam Elliott and making sure he was off but he was off as well he like was way off their bench was off they yeah, offered nothing they were awful yeah the kid got sent for 10 he was like yeah, their bench ain't... It's not that much, man. Jack Hetherington, like, he normally comes on with a lot of aggression. Mm. He was just a little bit off. Yeah, they were, I, just, they were I, just a little bit off. I mean, like... Do they have too many small bodies in the middle, mates? Like, with, with so you got Braley, right? Kurt Mann plays lock. Mm. Phoenix Crossland comes on. Sometimes Phoenix Crossland, Kurt Mann, and Jaden Braley are on the field at the same time. Now you play against South and that. You play against South and all these bigger bigger packs, Penrith and the Broncos are big. And physical, Manly's big and physical. You know, like you got some teams that have got some big boppers. Like look at Manly, you got that Paseka, you got Ola Kawatu, Tulangi, Jake Jaboyevich, who just like you don't even know he's there. Next minute he just fucking pumps you. Mm. Croker, Kepi. So you got some big so boppers. Croker's, Croker's is not a spot either. I'm not saying these guys are spots, they're just there's just quick play the balls. Mate, there's a lot of quick play the balls. And what do you do as a big man? You try and identify the smaller bloke, you're gonna get Braley, you're gonna get Kurt Mann. Mm. Kurt Kurt Mann's a decent defender. Yeah, he he's is. decent. He's, he's all right. He's he a is decent, decent defender. He'll get just not up. next to Braley and Crossland. Yeah, you just and you, and you can't help who you get. you're not going to swap and go inside like Saifidi because these yeah. guys have got pride. They just want to sit there and they go, "I'll make the fucking tackles, put your body in front, all that kind of shit." Because it's the NRL. As I said, you can't. There's no one. You can't hide anyone anymore. Mace, yeah, you were right about the uh, game of the round. Broncos mm. of the Panthers. Mate, it was a cracker, wasn't it? It was. I mean, I just had a feeling that. The Panthers were sort of going to come back to earth a little bit, which they have, regardless of even even if they had to jag that game. They still come back to earth, in my in my opinion. Yeah. They didn't look as... Um, I don't know, what's the word? They just didn't... Mace, I wrote down this as soon as they ran out, and we talked about it, Penrith just don't have the presence now without mm. kicks and uppies. And they weren't... You know when they run on the field? Yeah. I was looking, they cut to Luke Garner on the coverage that I was watching, and he's pumped up. Luke Garner's a solid player. It's a little bit different when you're looking out. at... Looking Six at foot five kick out. And, and even and, and like we said before, Mitch Kenny's a dog. Yeah. But when it gets inside the 20, you ain't worried about Mitch Kenny inside no. the 20, man. He just he just doesn't have that skill set. And he's, 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 like I said, he's as tough as nails. But when you're defending Api Carousel inside the 20, it's fatiguing mm. you trying to think what he's going to do. Like and where even, Cleary is and where Isaiah Yo is. Yes. There's a lot of things where you don't then have you to worry think about eight. the nine... You got to. You, you can really put kicks. your energy. You can put your energy onto other other people. You're going to yes. have more numbers on Luai coming from the inside. You're going to have more numbers on Cleary. You can have that short side. Cleary does Cleary go right, go to his right. You got yeah. that covered. You know, if he goes out the back, if he's out the back of Yo, you can have that covered. If you're a B because mate. because of the sorry because of the the um, the skill set that Appy has of drawing and 
getting the markers to bite a little bit. And Isaiah Yo jams in behind A and then steps out to B. And then Leota would run inside C. And then Cleary goes boom. And then everyone comes in, 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 in. Kick out, fucking boom at the three man one on one. And if Kick out doesn't get it, it's fucking Dylan Edwards out the back. And then fucking the other center and whatever it's Tyo scores in the, in the corner. And they are clinical at that shit. And they're not clinical. That's the word I was looking for. They are not clinical anymore. Yes. There's, a bit, there's a little bit of mess in the middle there, which is very fucking... You can see it. I'm mm. just like, oh, it's just, it's just not the same. You're it's a, not the same. You're a B defender, Mason. You're defending Penrith with Abi Carousel, Moses Leota at the front, and you got all the shape. Are you even looking at Nathan Cleary? You're probably not. You're focusing on Moses and, you, and Uppy. Whereas if you've got Mitch Kenny and he's got Moses Leota at the front, but at, you're probably going... Who's as, what's going on out here? But as I'm saying, when Abby comes out on that left side, just say they're right at the right side of the field and they're all stacked on the left. They've probably got about seven. So you're stacking about seven. Seven, trying, even probably trying to flip one late. Yep. And markers are working really hard. The, Appy comes out, gets the markers. Isaiah Yo runs that in out line. He'll start at fucking A. He'll get to B. Leota's running outside C. He gets C's shoulder in. The four man's there. Cleary's around the back. Fucking kick out is already on the three man. He needs to make a big decision. Does he come in? Because you've got Edwards out the back and then you've got the fucking Tungo and then you've got Toto. Yep. And it's fucking clinical and all the, and everything that they run is just fucking on point. Everyone's inside shoulders, but they're starting on the outside. They finish on the inside. So you have to fucking take into account that he's running. Because if you want to slide out on Leota, Yo's going to fucking hit him. And if you're, you know what I mean? Like if, yeah. you're, if you're the B defender or even the C defender, because he starts on the C and he breaks real late, Leota or Fisher Harris. When, when you run those blocks, late, they, late. All, they all do it and it's layers to shit. You know what I mean? So when they, if you don't account for Leota and you don't square up on him, you can't just fucking check and go because Yo will hit him. And if you fucking at A and you let Yo on your inside shoulder, he's going to dummy and fucking go and he's got the leg speed to either get through you and then everyone's pushing up through the fucking ruck because Cleary will go from there into there. Yeah. And Luai's coming through there. So like all that shit we've been seeing for three years somehow is just sort of not as clinical. Do you yeah. think it was a big part of that, Just Mace? a little bit. Out, That's timing. Out of all the teams, nearly the entire squad played in the World Cup. So they haven't started training until January. It's probably going to take... Yeah, I'm not worried about them making the eight and shit. You, you look, at, you look at probably, bit. you know, we'll get to Penrith, Roosters, a few of these teams. Half their squads are playing in the World Cup. So mm. for people that don't know, they don't come back until January. Yeah. Some of them come back a little they bit earlier. If you're a young kid, apparently Isaiah Katoa went, fuck that, wanted to come back straight away at Redcliffe and ended up leading to him getting the gig over Milf, um, maybe uh, at the end there. So you got about, um, you got to play, what, you got about, what, eight players in the in, in the Penrith starters that played in the World Cups? More, I reckon. So More. let's go. So you got obviously May, Tyrant, Taylor May, who didn't play. Um, Isaac Tungall, he got he got injured. Stephen Crichton was, Drone was, Nath was, Isaiah Yo was, Fisher Harris was, Jesus. Moses Leota was, Liam Martin was. 12? Who on the bench is Spencer Lenu? Was he 12? playing for Sar? Like bizarre. How many is that? Bizarre. Twelve. Bizarre. How many? How many? Do you keep and count? Yeah. So it, people, people say thirteen out of seventeen. Yeah. And just say the, the Nathan Clearies and the probably Dill Edwards didn't. Salmon didn't. Yeah. Mitch let's Kenny just go didn't. Who didn't yeah. And Sonny Luke even did. So probably. But Sonny, Luke, and that—they're all coming back before Christmas, right? You'd Probably. Imagine, you'd imagine but they would because have, yeah. no, but because of the RLPA, but, that's massive. but because of the RLPA law, um, rules, oh, you've got they get yeah. six weeks minimum, maybe yeah. even eight weeks. So just say whenever their last World Cup was, what, just say if you're in the final for Samoa, Samoa, yeah. you don't have to come back till next till January. year, yeah. and it's up to you and the clubs. This is where the clubs are like, you better fucking come back, yeah. You know what I mean? Like pretty, with, pretty, with yeah. us, with us, we're like we're going to let kick out when all these sort of blokes come back. But if you played, for, yeah, because they've got the runs on the board. Yeah, but they've had deep runs and they just won the grand final, so they've got another four weeks of playing football. Yeah, we didn't make the eight last year, so hey, you had your four weeks off there, and then you play. You know, so come back a little bit early, unless you're like Burton, Birdo, or you're like Fox and kick out. Do you know what I mean? Let's roll on the Broncos team, T. Um, no, we're just, no, we're talking about just say with the, the World Cup boys. So like yeah, they got all and, that. And, and no, yeah, they got all that. No, I'm just saying with with um, just say our boys. We yep. they didn't come back till like January. Just say fucking ten. Oh, ten. Mad, Maddie and um, most, most other teams. So we're not, we're not, you're not in a system like Penrith where yep. you can just sort of fall in. You know, so it takes a little bit to get. They've had like probably four weeks of training. And then they're yep. in round one. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So and probably only two and a half, maybe yeah, four weeks of proper preseason, and then fucking. Like two, you know, leading into the season, so it's hard on these young kids. If you haven't, had, if you haven't had like two or three big preseasons or anything like that, it's hard. Yeah, it'd be interesting to sort of like attack when you look at teams, um, you know, as we go down. So Manly performed pretty well. Ches, 
Oluquatu, Kola. Chez is veteran, maybe, but yeah, yeah. Oluquatu's so, third year in. I'm just trying to think of the teams now as we go through, but let's move on the Broncos and just yeah. give them their fucking flowers. Yeah, fucking. Um, up. Herbie Farnsworth. He maximizes every opportunity just because he mm. always puts himself in the picture. That's what I find. Like he's like. Yeah, he's fast, he's strong, he's all this sort of stuff, but he just wants it more than in mm. most players when I watch him. So, which you know brings us to what happened, what we spoke about last week, Mace. He's, there's talk that he's you know wants to play fullback. Can you can you envision? Yes, Herbie playing fullback. Yeah, he's fit, strong, got good skills. He can play on both sides of the ruck. Like I think I think he's willing. I don't think he's he's doing it for the money. Mm. Some wingers and centers they try to negotiate so they can get more money. I don't think so. He's already at, he's already at Brisbane. I yep. mean, uh, already at Redcliffe, and he's going to be there. So he wants to play fullback. I mean, I think the Hammer will have something to say about that. That's probably why he's playing yep. out of his skin. Yeah, he'll you have know, a big year. He'll Herbie, be looking to have a big year. You know, Herbie's going to be. You know, I think he's the future of the game, man. He's massive. Like, yeah, I like him. I, mate. I rate him highly defensively. Everything he does, everything good. Like, even those couple of those tries that he scored, they shouldn't have scored those. Mm. It's just his effort. Plays. He just wanted. He it. can't coach that effort. You can't coach those things in some kids. And he's always about it. He's always fucking thereabouts. You know what I mean? He's backing up. He's scoring tries. He's making good tackles. He does everything good. You can see why Wayne wanted him. Um, but Brisbane, outstanding. Payne Haas, what, 65 minutes. Paddy Carrigan. 200, over 200 metres. First game. Hasn't played 100% since fucking... What, last year, got injured too. Didn't 16, he have some surgery? You know I mean? surgery the back, the back end of the year. Year, like he, yeah. he was just like part of the team. He wasn't. He's you know, Payne Hart's numbers are usually fucking two hundred meters plus. Yeah, he, was, he had was surgery a couple so of games. Yeah. The World Cup, did he? Yeah, there was a couple of games where he didn't even make a hundred meters, and that's yeah. massive for Payne Hart. Yeah. You know he, I mean? he must have been so banged he up. He must have been that banged up because usually he's had a hundred by the time you, fucking half time. Yeah, you know. So him, Paddy Carrigan, all of them. Fucking every Cop, single one. Cop, Cobo's still a little bit raw, eh? Yeah, I, I, mean, he, I know he's playing fullback, but, but he's willing. He had like twenty touches yeah. and they were heavy, like big, hard, hard he was, fucking runs. He was welcoming the contact, on and the, on he the wanted it. You know, he returns. said some shit about Luai, and yeah. he ended up getting dragged old a couple of times, and they end yeah. up, you know, they end up doing that to a lot of teams, Penrith. And he still stayed in it. He's fucking loves contact. He don't mm. give a shit. There's always a smile on his face. It's a pleasure to watch that kid. Mm. There's not a bad bone in his body. He said some shit in the preseason. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, just did a fucking off potty. He's just a really good kid who just yeah, loves like football. I love his energy and I just love what he brings. And everyone's saying, you know, like, he won't be able to play fullback, won't be fit enough. He had like 20 plus touches. He made it fucking 200 metres or something. Like he was a freak. People, people, oh, some, yeah, some old players that sort of just say that shit and label players straight off the bat, like, it just fucking throws me off. Um, I also thought, I th- Ezra Mam is so explosive. Yeah, man. man. Every time he gets the ball, he'd be that hard to tackle. 107 it's, running metres for a 5'8", Ezra Mam. Did he get it to 107? Yeah. It felt like it. It that, felt like any, any time he was inside the 20, he was a fucking problem. What about that movie put on Nathan Cleary? Yeah, when he, when he zipped yeah, it yeah, 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 yeah. Made the break and put the kick in. Their bench was good. Everything, they looked they look, they look the real deal. Yeah. Well, they, they, they just fell off the cliff last year. Massive but they had, they had, before Paddy Carrigan got suspended, they were sitting in fourth position. Mm. Biggest so they're definitely, a can, the they're definitely a candidate for bounce back. And especially to, cut, to turn up with that performance after all the shit that had happened in the preseason as well, all the noise, um, yeah. all the Cobo stuff. And shout out to Kevy. Kevy deserves a lot of respect I'd like, for I'd like to see more from Katoni Stags, but... Yeah, Katoni's sort of still finding his way yeah, back in, isn't I he? Yeah, I love the kid, but, you know, like, he had four runs. Katoni's like an old-school center A. He like, just wants quality ball, yeah. and he wants to be dominant. But, like, everyone says he's super competitive, and I can see that whenever he's in it, he's in a contest. Yeah. I just want him to get in more contests. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't trust his body yet and to really go I at think it's that. Because it's I like, think he's had a couple you know, of even, even, like, injuries. at the back end of the year, back end of the game, he's cramping. Mm. You know, little things like that, you know, like, so his body's not where he wants to be. Once it's all together, he's fucking dynamite. I just look at him because I know how much potential he's got yeah. and he's fucking... He, 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 should, he could be fucking... He, he should, should be playing Origin, in yeah. my opinion. And he's a left side centre, right? Is he left side or he's right, right side? He's right, right side. on the left. See, it's hard because Herbie's going so good on, le- on the left. He's le- I, I think I think Tony well, is the left side centre. Well, he get more ball. As good as Herbie's going... He's almost it's it's making him stand out from Katoni. That's yeah. the thing. That's what's making you notice Katoni. When you see Herbie, I know it's only round one, but even at the back end of last year, Herbie was playing that well. He started looking over and going, you "Haven't like and Herbie was he, playing he, right. He, he was setting up. No, no, he was on the right. He was setting up Cobo a fair bit for a no, few like, of those tries. Was, the, was was Herbie on the right last Katoni's year? Katoni's always been right side. Has he? Yeah, Katoni's always been left. right. No, he's always been right. 
Okay. Yeah. I rate. I just want him to get more ball. Yeah. I mean, like it's, it's the NRL. It's not like it's under tens where people don't pass left. Yeah. Or right. Him and him and Ren have got to figure out a way so he can get some more carries. So Ezra Man, who's ball. on his side there? Uh, Ren, Ren's on the right with him and uh, uh, Ricky. Ricky. See, I like to and see Ricky. Ricky I want to see Ricky arrive this year. This is about his third or fourth year. Usually, <clears> that happens for back rolls. Find his feet. You know, he's got a lot of potential. That kid. I think um, Jordan Ricky. This is like just from an outsider looking in. I reckon he tried to focus more on defense last year. Yeah. I think because obviously he's got all the talent. Uh, attacking wise, he's, he's he's got all the tools for a back row. But I think the de- defense was letting him down. So I think he he made a conscious mm. effort to fix up his D and and concentrate on that to begin with to stiffen up that edge. And I think everything else will just come off the back of it. Yeah, it's important. But he gets his game right right on this year yeah. because that'll that'll inject Katoni Staggs. Because he was unless, really strong in the indigenous unless you game. Get him, like, I just want to see him have early ball to like Katoni. Yeah. Like everyone's going, oh, no, he doesn't get involved enough. Like, shut the fuck up. Give him early ball. Mm. Like, get him involved. Yeah. You can easily get him involved. Let if Kevy goes, if Kevy goes, first three sets, get the ball to fucking Katoni. He's going to get the ball. Yeah. Like, start giving him the ball. Because he's not that sort of kid who's going to get in there dummy half and all that kind of shit and do all those tough runs like Hodjo used to do. Hodjo used to get in dummy half and just terrorise teams. Get about 25 touches all the time. Yeah. Just big long those fucking are awful gangly, those scoots, eh? gangly fucking. He looks so freak. slow, but he always got you. Mate, he's fucking great. He's most underrated, one of the best centers in the game ever. Yeah. Hodjo, yeah. No, he's, um, he's that guy. Yeah, but like you know, people think that's Katoni. Katoni's explosive. Mm. He wants those short balls near the line. He just wants one on one battles. He wants that shit. He wants that smoke. He wants to go at it all the time. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he's, he's got, got to keep him in that. He's fucking, got to force his way into the game. Then he's yeah. got to come in and have a few but more. But they of those can carries. just go fucking get early ball to Katoni. Yeah. If Kevy Walters is like feeding him about getting him involved, get him the ball. If you're fucking Reynolds, get him the ball. Cut fucking Ricky out, or get him to push in one. Yeah. A lot of ways you can get the ball. Scope, you got bragging rights over Mace after this one, thirty-one to six. Manly over the dogs Doesn't count How'd you see it, Scope? Uh, I want to start off by Even without taking my Manly hat off That sin bin for Flano Was one of the worst sin bins I've ever seen Yeah A few little things changed I mean, like Look, again It's not like It's like the cape It affected the game It affected the game And it's not going to I'm not saying that Obviously It might have been closer But it didn't help Obviously, you know They went on And and Tommy puts on a little try For for Gaz Mm. a little bit later um, the boys were good. Manly were good. Turbo's 60, 70% still, yeah. which is worrying because they still won 31-6. But the thing is, and it reminds me of Latrell last year. I said this. Latrell went over to the States. he come back. His presence out on the field mm. makes everyone better for South Sydney. Mm. And Tommy's the same for Manly. So Tommy just being out there, you could see when he scored. There's a different like vibe. Fucking you know, you know what it's like, man, mate. Man. You know when like a certain player scores, everyone's like, he's our fucking guy. Like yeah. you run in, you go, yes, our fucking our leader's here. Ches is the captain, but the leader of that team Tom. is Tommy, and they go as far as Tommy goes. Mm. And even like you could see the emotion in Jakey after the game. Um, but I just thought, man, fuck, watching the game, the fucking boys looked that gassed. Yeah, the, um, the game was there to be taken. A couple of moments. Teams. A couple of moments from uh, Cherry Evans, a little kick. You know, intercepts, on, like intercept. just some real yeah. fucking. I mean, that was right at the death, but um, shit. But it, like, shit just it. even the fucking, you know, like the deflection on the kicks and yeah. all that sort of shit. I'm like, this went Manly's way, didn't it? It did. Everything did. Yeah, you know? and I mean, there was like, a good vibe there at at, uh, at uh, Four Pines, Mace. Mate, it was great. Yeah, not in the coach's box, but yeah. <laughs> I was in there young. How did you know, I'd rather be on the fucking hill yeah. or in the fucking Four Pines. Fucking st- One of my mates, Matty Hill, shout out to Matty Hill, runs the legends and stuff like that. And he's like, what are you fucking doing? I'm in the box on the beers. I'm saying, I'm in the coach's box, shut up. <laughs> 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 but, um, mate, I enjoyed my time there. I mean, I mean, enjoyed the game. I yep. thought it was great. I was really excited, you know. It's like, it's like, like, because I've had so much to do with the players and everything like that, you've got that, like, real atta- emotional attachment. I just want to see him go good. Yep. As I said, like last couple of years, I didn't have any, like any emotional attachment to those players. So I didn't really care. Yeah, it's a game. I'm just like you're going to sit there and go, "Well, you didn't play the way you you, you, you don't really know how they, they you ba- you base them on their performance. You judge them on their performance. You don't know all the hard work that they've gone into all week, all that kind of shit. I know how hard these guys have worked. So I'm like, fuck, I'm so disappointed for them because it, whatever we fucking game plan for, we didn't do. You know what I mean? There's so much football and points that we left on the field, which is the which is a growth lesson. You know, like, it's just like, hey, boys, we take this, this, this away and we do this, this and this, we fucking nearly win the game. The game was right there. It was 12-6 for fucking 30 fucking six minutes. It was there for the taking. It was there for the taking. You can see Manly were fucked. 
That we was just, just we disgust. Just, we didn't apply the blowtorch. We just fucking lit a little bit of a flame and then we let them off. You know, a couple of things kicking out the floor. You're never going to see Birdo play another bad game like that. No. The greats don't play bad games. No. They play them every 50. Yeah. You know, he's, he's too good a player for that. Yeah. You know, Kicks didn't have his best game. All, the, all our main guys. And, like, we're that team where, you know, gonna, we're going to look at those guys as leaders and, like, we'll, we'll be – the younger players will be a little bit distraught not knowing what, what the fuck's going on. You well, they I mean? can not only not have bad games, they've almost got to have 10s all yeah, the time. Yeah, they, they need 8 out of 10 all the time. 7 out of 10, that's their standard. That's the standard that Minimum. they have to them Minimum. for themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there was that, that game was, you know, it was, it was disappointing. And, you know, as I said before, it feels like, like we lost. You know what I mean? Like, instead of the Bulldogs lost. I don't feel like the Bulldogs lost. I feel like we, we lost. Yeah. I feel fucked. And I'm like... Imagine how like the players are feeling, or the, or the other coaching staff, because we're in it together. This is a, it's a different feeling, you know what I mean? Me doing podcasts the last couple of years, I'm like, I wasn't there every fucking day. I don't mm. know all these guys. I don't know these guys what they what makes them tick and how much hard work and that they put in. I fucking know now, so it's different. So you have a different affinity of like fuck, love love for these kids, you know? Yeah. And you want to see them go good, and you fucking hate to see that shit. Who are you looking for for a mad bounce back this week? Out of uh, you think oh. uh, they're playing? They've got the storm, eh? Well, the storm doesn't get any easier. Going down to Melbourne, I mean, thank fuck, Munster's out. You know, but like that just evens it up a little bit because yeah. you can see what Melbourne's like. They, yeah. can move, they can get 100 players out and they've still got that system. Yeah. They still do all the little things. You know, like Harry Grant, Jerome Hughes. You know, you've got all I, these good I, I players. I think it's a dangerous game for the storm. It is a dangerous game because traditionally, Bulldogs in Melbourne go at it. Mm. It's fucking even. It's always even. There's, a, there's, there's that fucking... And it stems down to when Chris Anderson left the Bulldogs and went and coached Yeah, Yes, Melbourne. okay. You know what I mean? So it, it happened that long ago. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be good, man. Just to see how we bounce back that mentality, you know? Yeah. It's just hard to see him after the game being really fucking really disappointed, you know? They might start questioning the, the process and are we doing the right things and everything yeah. like that. The coaches might start doing it, everyone, but we're not. It's round one. It's round one. Chill and that's out. the thing. Everyone's chill the chill. fuck out. Yeah. We're doing the right thing. We just didn't. As I said, it's a performance on the weekend. You don't get judged on your training and how good you train. You get judged on a performance. And we didn't perform good as a team. We didn't play good as a team. All the things that we want, all our measurables, as uh, what we want to do as a team, we didn't reach. As, uh, and we're I, way I, off. I, I know Kicks didn't play his game, best game, but I thought Homolo was was really strong Olukwatu was great Olukwatu was really strong he's going to get like and, and, and generally for the last couple of years I've watched him more closely too because I think I think he is the difference like he is if he I've, he, I probably had a question mark on his fitness a little mm. bit at the back end of 2021 I think 2022 he was if it wasn't, you know, Lock and Croker, our best player, and playing big minutes every it's game, good, it was Homole, man. Some really decent hitters, yeah. you know what I mean? We, didn't, we just played two square. We just went one out. We didn't support each other enough. So all these things are fixable, right? There's no injuries. You know, like support play can get better. Everything can get better. Our intensity and our grit was there. I mean, our intensity can go up if you look at how other teams played and how hard they hit. But our grit and our fucking willing to stay in the fight is fucking there. Shit that you can't you can't fucking coach these kids. They just want it. You know, they want to compete. They want to do all these good things. They want to win. You know what I mean? That's why I'm so fucking shattered for them because I'm like, fuck, you know, they didn't get the job done. I'm disappointed. You know, it sucks. But the beauty of it is fucking NRL is a roller coaster. And I told them at the start, get on fucking board. You've just locked yourself in. More. Yeah, you just, just got lock the in, fucking just you got down the down bumpers the, on. You know, just, the, you just <laughs> fucking rat one down the, the fucking. It's the fucking what, what what is it the fucking um the worst one out at uh, Wonderland, remember? The uh, bush the bush beast. The bush beastie. This is what the NRL is, the bush beast. It's fucking shaking all around. You are getting in you're going, is this safe? It's not safe. I don't this doesn't feel safe. Are we going to be sweet? So, that's the thing. I said, look, don't fucking ride the highs too high, don't go too low. Stay in the middle all the time. But fucking accept and love it when you are going good. And when it does go shit like this week, fucking go, I don't want this feeling anymore, then come back in the middle. Yep. It's the only advice I always give these young kids, don't fucking sit up here too long because you get fucking get knocked back down. Don't go too down. Stay in the middle all the time. So now you debrief the game. Got all that shit out today, 40 fucking two degrees out of Belmore. Got all that shit out. And then we just head into Melbourne. We just concentrate on Melbourne after today. You know, so it was good. The guys, we had a really good meeting and all that kind of stuff. And they all talked about it and they know they can get better. And there's things that you just get better at. And these are all the measurables that are easy, like support plays, getting in shape better. Like that's just fucking knowing what you're doing, right? It ain't an effort thing and it's not all that kind of stuff. You know, go up a bit of intensity and we'll, um, you know, we'll be fine. 
Cowboys got it done over the Raiders. Chad Townsend field goal in the 75th minute, 1918. Scope, what do you reckon? <coughs> It was, it was, to start the game, super impressive. This is the Cowboys, me and Mace tipped to win the comp. I'm like, all right, we're onto something here. Obviously had him as, uh, was really confident on, on them as, as, you know, my better better the weekend. But them playing in these sorts of games last year were okay. 1918 against a tough fucking gritty Canberra Raiders team. That's okay, but now if they're going to become like Mace, if we if we're going to consider them heavyweight contenders, mm. legit premiership contenders, they've got to put this game away. I'm not saying that they have to win forty nil or 36 anything like 10. that. Thirty six ten, thirty six ten, thirty six six, maybe even like twenty four six is a good scoreline because Canberra end up getting a bit of momentum through a bit at them, bat it, a bit at them, but. Todd Payton said it the best straight after the game. They only had two sets before they scored. Two sets on the line before uh, Gula went over. The Gula. The Gula. Look at the haircut on that kid. Awful haircut. Ooh, don't look good, kid. Get it off. That, I, th- I think the worse it looks, the better it is for, for, mm, for mate, these days. Hey, it's, a Kelly, it's a Canberra thing, man. It's a TNT thing. They man. don't give a fuck. <laughs> you got nothing to do in Canberra, just get the fucking worst haircut you can. Um, but Mace, yeah, I just thought Drinky was... Mate, that was silky to begin with. Yeah, they had yeah. they had a fair... Like, I think they had... Possession rate was crazy good to begin with. Mm. Um, worrying signs that Raiders, then after you know not having so much ball, really got it together, put a couple on them. I thought it was a you know, really gritty performance from Canberra. Um, a couple of Chad Townsend's touches were really silky. Scooping up that ball, rolling that little kick for a, for a repeat set before um, you know they scored their try with... Uh, drinky a little bit later mm. off a Reese Robson kick. I like that kid. Yeah. Reese Robson's a I fucking like Reese dog, Robson. man. He hits like a yeah. fucking truck. Yeah, he's good, man. He's going to, I think you mentioned it uh, be, on hey, one of the other shows. If, if if He'll be pushing up, he won't. First even. 12 games, and we're talking Origin, and, and the cow, cows are 8 and 4, you know, 10 and 2 or something like that. Yeah. He's fucking going to, he might be the starter for New South Wales. Him and Appy might be fucking going 9 and 14. So, my take on the Cowboys. I thought they, they started the game off awesome, I reckon. Mm. And what other team could come back in fucking ca- in Townsville round one and get that gritty little, make that game dirty, Their bench was dirty good. as hell? Their bench Canberra. was good. It's the only team that could have done that. Yeah. Every other team would have got beaten 36-10, I reckon, because yeah, I fucking agree. North Queensland was on. Um, I thought they were outstanding. Chad Townsend's fucking just... He's unbelievable. He's, the he, way that he goes and squares up, as I said, like when he's and Dearden picks it so good, right? So when when um, Townsend's going to the line, he goes that in and out, and then he squares up. He's got his lead he can hit, and then Dearden has that. He, he keeps that depth where he, he when he's deep, he's going to pass. But when he so the more Townsend goes in the line, he attacks it. He fucking runs. He's mm. a runner, Dearden, and he'll fucking get you slipping if you're a four man, and he fucking throw that dummy because everyone else is hitting those holes and Nana and that, and you're fucked. Yeah. And, but he does it so good. His tempo is so good, and their timing off it. When Townsend getting that wide ball, he's catching it. B. He gets to C. He goes unders like that. And then he'll see what the four man's doing. If the four man is coming in like that, he'll fucking just beeline for it. He does it so good. He nearly scored a couple of tries in the first yeah, half did. like that. But their combinations on the left side and on the right. He yeah. does it both sides. That's the beauty of like the best teams is like even with Souths on the weekend, yeah. which we'll get so to. So we're gonna next. get to Souths, but like just say both sides of the ruck, then you got fucking Ruben Cotter. And you got Reece Jason Robson. Taumalolo, and you got that fucking other big guy who's the other prop, McLean. Yep. The only bloke who didn't get over 100 metres is um, the 12, the young kid, the other back rower. Nanai. Uh, Nanai. Nanai. Oh, Nanai. No, yeah, he didn't get, he got like 44 metres because it wasn't going right. It yeah. was always going left. Everyone else got over 100 metres. Tao Malolo, 200, yeah, 200 Nano, plus. Yeah, Nano, Nano was fairly quiet. Yeah, Nano's Nano, quiet. thinking about it, so I can't Tao, remember Tao any Malolo, moments where Cal, I've seen him. Tao Malolo and um, Ruben Cotter, over 200 plus metres for the first game. 60 metres. Cotter was Th- in everything. 35 tackles. Like, he no was in misses, everything. No misses. He's just an animal, that kid. I don't know what fucking... You can't... I mean, he, him and Tao Malolo pretty much have, like... And Jordan McLean, they're just three props. And uh, Cohen Hess is a beast. Yeah. And then you've got um, Nano, who who knows what you're going to get. He's just got that special touch. Yeah. Murray Tuolungi, you've got Felt, you've got fucking Val Holmes... 
It's a fucking team. Hiku, my, do you my, know what I mean? Like me and my it's, brother it's, watching the game, like, how many tackles has Cotter made already? He doesn't give a fuck. He'd, make, <laughs> he'd play for three days straight, I reckon. <laughs> he don't stop, man. I love that kid. Yeah. And I just think – and he passes as well. Yeah. So he's got a little short pass. He's game, got mad he? skill he's in him, man. He's got skills, man. He's one of the best locks in he's, the game. He's, he's, a hook, he's got hooker skills yeah. and he plays front row I think middle. he played – because when he first came into the game, he was a nine. Yeah, well, I, I remember he played uh, nine for the Indigenous game yeah, when um, – He played nine. Laurie came on my potty, so I remember – Laurie Daly came on the potty and uh, this is when he was an Indigenous coach yeah. and I was like, tell me about this Ruben Cotty guest. Yeah. To be fair, I, I don't know much about him. Young kid up in North Queensland. Yeah. He's a nine, going to come on. And then I remember watching that game I was like, he was all, almost the best player on the field. And I yeah. noticed him from that point. I went, man, it fucking... It'll be hard to beat, mate. If they, if they can string in 65, 70 minutes of that football, no one's yeah. touching them. Uh, I, mean, like, no one, I mean, not no one, but yeah. I mean, like, they're going to be hard, be hard to beat. beat. Yeah. Nano and, and JT... Pretty quiet, yeah. From yeah, from but still, JT was quiet with two hundred and six meters. That's a quiet day in the office yeah. for JT because he wasn't rumbling through the middle and fucking yeah. offloading. It wasn't and all a that clear kind of break. Stuff. You know, it wasn't a clear fucking break. Running over seventy people. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because you know why? The drink waters can shine. The Robsons can shine. Deedon can shine. I thought the Raiders bench were really good. I think Horsburgh, Horsburgh is really establishing himself now as a, a bit of yeah, an alpha dog down right. there, coming off the bench. Um, I like Tom Starling, man. Yeah, Tom good. Starling just epitomises sticks. And Gula. Gula was Gula's good, well. good. Yeah, Gula started for him, I think. Um, and maybe he had a stint and then come Cowboys back on. Cowboys bench was good because that mean, the mean kid, was it the, the big New Zealand kid? Uh, Griffin Neem? He was good. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's solid. They've got it. Yeah. It was, it was just a... They've got a couple of dogs, eh? This is what this was a game of dogs. Like, they yeah. That was, was... Yeah, exactly. If anyone could, fair, uh, could upset North Queensland... It's fucking Ricky Stewart and those yep. blokes who don't give a shit. 18-0, yep. who cares? Just Jack get the next White. try. If it was 24-0, it's fucking done. Yeah. Jack Whiten's about that life. Starling is. Fucking two props are. They're good, man. Pardon me. All right. Next game. Game of the round. Sharks and Rabbits. Uh, yes. South got it done. 27 points to 18. Scope, Lockie Elias had, uh, had probably the game of his career. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, pretty fair. Twenty six games. I, I love Lockie Elias. I think um, you know who, you know who Lockie Lockie. I think I'm sure I was trying to think of a player comp. There was, you know, he obviously with the stature and his size, and the way he defends small. and gets under him, he gives me a bit like the way he hits. He's got Joey's hits as well, but I think he he reminds me more of Kronk, Mace. Yeah. You know where like Kronk wasn't Kronk's the big, a little nugget man. He was a nugget, eh? He wasn't yeah. like tall, but and you know you know what he. You know how he defended really well? Because he's footy IQ. Mm. So Kronk would always put himself in positions. So People just didn't know how big Kronk was because he had the baggy jerseys in, 2000, in the mid-2000s. And, and he, and he, and he, and he, Once he, they tightened up, he was jacked. Baggy greens. When he, um, the way that he reads defense so well, like he can break down. The game happens so slow for him. So I remember like running a Kronk a couple of times and you think like the... You know, you've got the scouting reporters to get after Kronk, make him tired, therefore taking gas out of him and attack. Mm. But he'd always get, get hit you right underneath here and Rip um, Lockie Ilias, bang, knocks out um, Ronnie Moore Tyler, thought he was going over in the corner. Lockie knocks it out, they go down the other end, he scores a meaty. Then he sets up, well, gives a nice little early ball to Coleman Tungy, um, plays short to Campbell Graham for one of his. It was a fucking outstanding performance mm. from uh, Lockie Ilias. Or just like it just showed everyone was thinking they were one dimensional, going left, go left, mm. go left, go left. They needed to fix that up. They really did. Cody Walker needed to like take advantage of that as well. He goes on both sides. Well, they of the will rug. later on, won't they? Yeah. They, In another game, they'll take advantage of that if the right yeah. keep dominating. And then like they'll that. just play whatever whatever the defense gives them and whatever spot they think is there, they'll get at and they'll exploit. Because Demetrio's like that. He's mm. a great attacking coach. Mm. Um, to see Campbell Graham score a couple of tries was great. Yeah, see, well, you see, you basic notice... Line, basic well, You know how good the right side was going on. Mm. Trell was coming over from the left to the right. That's and then he meant. played short to Campbell Graham's yeah. last try. Yeah. So he's seen the value in coming over to the right. And for me, they were... I, I, was, I was tossing up between them and um, the uh, the Roosters to, mm. to see who'd play in the grand final, just to see the experience. South would win that. Now, if you're going off round one form... I'm, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to completely change it, but I... There, I was I was worried about they the Rabbitohs. They like the full package because you know they had Totola out for eighty minutes and they lost um, the back rower. Who's the uh, Jai Arrow? Jai Arrow. Yep. He he was off after seven after ten minutes. So two middles off against a Cronulla team who have got big dominant middles. You know what I mean? Like I thought, fuck Cronulla's in for sure. Evens it up because Trindle was halfback who's played outstanding. Yeah, he played really played well. Played outstanding, and I'm like they're going to lose it through the middle. 
Uh, big Shaq Mitchell has to play like 40 plus. He was solid. He was good. Yeah. Big Tom Burgess has to play 50, 60 plus. Outstanding. Tommy's a handful, man. You know what I mean? Moala, outstanding. All these guys, Cheekham. I like that David Moala. Cheekham. Yeah. Like all these blokes just stood up and that's a fucking culture. You know what I mean? Kalal Matungi, fucking animal. Do you know what I mean? They were just going at it and going at it and relentless and stopping tries and all this sort of shit. It was try, it was nearly try for try, and then it was about five tries got disallowed from people's efforts. Mortalo, I know he fucked that one up, but yeah. he saved two. Yeah, because that's and I love that about him because yeah. he could have went into his shell and sort of went. Oh, no, nah, there's know. no way that's no, going to throw him off. Eh? No, He's not that. Didn't, didn't yeah. throw him off at all. But he went, he saved another try, put another, like he saved two more. So I'm like, I love that shit about him yeah. because he was filthy at it. Yeah, everyone's going, he should be smiling. Shut the fuck up. That's what he does. He yeah. thought he was over. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Everyone did. He's but an maybe, entertainer. He's an entertainer. You watch Ronnie up. because you know something's going to happen. Yeah, maybe put him. in your left arm kid, you know. Yeah, just that's. To protect that. Yeah. And it, lesson learned from him. Yeah. He didn't, sh- like, Katoa, all those things. Reminds movies, me of Ramian. something Inu, Inu would do. Yeah, massively. Inu, he's Inu's like, a mad egg. He's like Inu, eh? Inu's Mula got that shit. like Inu. Just smiling before. Yeah. I, remember, he used to smile before yeah. fucking kicks. Yeah, yeah. I want to throw the fucking ball at him. I used to talk that. Oh, stop fucking smiling, mate. You know what I mean? Be on the side. Like, what are you smiling about? He'd be like, look at I love up, you. Hey, you know, you mad egg. I love you, bro. He'd be looking up at the camera too. Though. He's looking at himself, <laughs> smiling at himself. That's what he does. Um, yeah, I just thought it was an outstanding game. A fucking defense I thought so. I still thought Sharks Rudolph was fucking great. Sharks Hamlin, Hamlin Lowelli was fucking great. Yep. Um, a couple of heavyweights, decent man. Decent hits, man. That was a brutal game. Yeah. Brutal game. What does Nico Hines mean to Cronulla? Does he play? If he plays. Would he have fucking won that game for him? Does he have that much of an impact with Cronulla? I don't think so. Man, I like Nico Hayes. I fucking love him. I think, uh, yeah, because the thing that sort of takes the gloss off her a little bit in the sense, like, would, would he have been missed is Braden Trindle played so well. But I just think Nico's taken his... Every time Nico... Every, well, time, I see, level, I every time I see Nico play now, with a Levels podcast, he's taken it to the next level, man. So... Um, yeah, I think they'll be sweet. Sharks are there's a mm. culture there in the Sharks, despite everything that sort of yeah, they had a few things go right in terms of middles drop out for South, but they were still in that game and uh, they'll be thereabouts at the end of the year. Uh, yeah, I don't think they're, they're gonna be top four. They'll be to, both those sides are gonna yeah. be top four. North Queensland and maybe Penrith. That's your top four. Because mm. I don't think hey, I, who else is gonna get there? Well, maybe Broncos, who knows? I could see um I can see Penrith slipping, eh? Yeah, but it'll probably come sixth or seventh. Yeah. They'll get yeah. their shit together. Yeah, out of the top four, though. Uh, who else was impressive for the Sharks before we move on? Toby yeah. Rudolph was great. Yeah, to- oh, their middles are really good. Finucane, um But defensively, I reckon um, South were more... I was probably more impressed defensively what they were doing. Yeah, their, their bench. Their middles, their bench was on. We, we sort of questioned their bench, didn't we? They had 15 we? players. Yeah. They had 15 players. Yeah, That's shout out to thing. Chi. They did. Like, they did the job, and that's a culture thing where you can just go, fucking boom, you're in, do the job. All right, we've got 15, we've got two middles out. Who <laughs> cares? Go at it. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. where, that's when you know you've got a good team. Yeah, it's impressive. And Latrell and that's only going to get better. Oi, Trell, Trell's Trell get and fitter. Cody, again, it's like the Nana and Tomalolo thing. Mm. Like, Tomalolo, obviously, you know, got ahead his 200 metres, but you didn't, go, you didn't watch that game going, fuck, they had a fucking monster game, and they were the reason they won. They still won 27-18 against the Damian Sharks. Damien Cook. And, and yeah, Cook Cookie. played good. Like, you've, like yeah. you know when they run, you know when he's running, they're dominating the middle. Cookie don't run unless there's a quick play the ball. So you're getting, if you're getting quick play the balls and the ruck speeds up, he goes. The only way to beat, the only way to beat um, South, I said in the last three or four years, is when teams dominate their middle. You nullify Cook, takes all their second phase out, dummy half running, the amount of shit that he creates from the nine. Penrith do that all the time. I don't think anyone can really stop that middle. Dolphins. Game of the round. Dolphins. <laughs> Perfect record, undefeated in the NRL. <laughs> but go to go, go fun. We spoke about uh, Felice a bit earlier, but Scope, uh, Isaiah Katawa's debut was uh, one to yeah, remember. Yeah, Katawa and SOS were impressive, eh, Mace? Like, the more the Roosters try to force it, the more it played into their hands for, mm. for, for the Dolphins, and in particular the young halves. They didn't really have to overcomplicate it. They didn't just kick. Yeah. Their completion rate was fucking... Close to 90% because the Roosters were at like 40%. So, um, 
Jeremy Marshall King, he was outstanding. If, if, if Tommy Dearden is the most isn't the most improved player in the competition in the last eighteen months, Jeremy Marshall King's right yeah. up there, man. He's Easy. I've known Jez for a while now, so he's and sort Dylan of, Edwards. Dylan Edwards, you're right. Dylan Edwards up there. I remember like Jez as a kid when he first hit the scene because he was good. He's good mates with my uh, brother. He sort of come through the school system where my brother's mm. at. I remember watching him play. I'm like, oh yeah, he's just going to be like a nice fill in sort of backup nine. In and out of first grade guy, fuck man, I couldn't have got it more wrong. Yeah. He's really established himself as, yeah, we talked about Wade Egan before. Um, there's some really good underrated Reese Robsons, the Wade Egans, mm. the Jeremy Marshall Kings. There's these players that are just on that next level trying to get themselves, put themselves into consistent well, he's contention a Kiwi for nine at the moment, isn't he? Nah, cheese. He's got cheese oh, in front shit. of him. Yeah, right. So he was in the World Cup squad, though. He was in the squad, but yeah, exactly. So he, they're thinking of him pretty highly. And I just think, he, him at the Dogs, he copped a fair bit at the first couple of years, and then he really solidified himself as our nine. Last year. And he was our best player last year. And I wish him nothing but the best, because he's a great clubman. He was there for five years, um, went through all the hard shit. And then um, he went up there, backed himself, and now he's fucking playing good. And... He got that round one win, and I thought he was the best player on the field. Did Felice, yes, so did, I. did Felice get like man of the match? Or yeah, something? Felice would have. Yeah, yeah he and did. I, actually, and I, think, and I think Marshall King started that shit. Yeah, well, yeah, Jez, Jez, Jez in attack really, yeah. really sprung him. And, and I think, I think um, Felice was good in attack as well. Yeah, he was pretty good. Yeah, he's uh, he's taken. Just, ta- he's taking like hit ups off the knot, on, off off taps now. I love that shit. Just yeah. steaming into it. So, Dolphins were great. I thought they, were good. they were unreal. Jesse Bromwich was amazing in the middle. Nichols was good seeing, seeing him score a try because he hardly gets one. Um, who's their other starting prop? Jared Wallace started for Jared him. Wallace was good. Everyone was fucking decent, man. I thought, I thought Tommy Sean Gilbert o, had Sean o Tommy Gilbert was 50-50. Sean O'Sullivan was better than Katoa. Like his decisions were good. He defended really he well. Was a solid, he, yeah, wasn't he? didn't he overcomplicate was it. I know. I know. Like Katoa's got that thing when he squared him up and he went out the back, and that's probably his highlight. Yeah, you know what I mean. But like, he was a bit shaky to begin yeah, with. Yeah, he was really shaky. Joseph Sawali got into it yeah, a couple of times. Exactly. Got him right in the so ribs. So I'm like, you know what? I, I still think um, O'Sullivan was was better than him, which was great. Yeah. Because I've had question marks over O'Sullivan for fucking years. Yeah. But I think still going to be there. But I think his time at the Panthers has made him into a fucking great first yeah. grader. We'll he, see. More than more than fucking handy first grader. Instead of being plugged in, plugged out. Yep. You're here. You're here. You're here. You're here. Maybe he can stay there for fucking three or four years. Solidify himself as one of our one of the decent like seven. He's not yep. going to be a superstar seven. But learning from Nathan Cleary maybe for fucking a year, a year under him. I can probably learn that much, and the systems that they are, that they have in place out of Penrith, the attitude that they have, the winning attitude that they have, he's that's rubbed off on him. And he's got big fucking strong, strong vets around him, like Felice, and that would take a number. Yeah. Can he get after it? So you don't have to overcomplicate it. Those guys can play with the kick, footy as get, well. Get to the kick, yep. make your tackles, kick well, make the tackle right, hard, make the right decisions. Don't uh, overplay your hand. That's Ruth, what Wayne Bennett would have said. Yep. And it's just typical Wayne performance. We talked a lot about them and the presser and, and whatnot as well. What about Moving the on the Roosters. The, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the presser, you want to talk pre- about No, no, no. I just don't no. fucking laugh at that. The comments. Just yeah. the way he held himself. I was yeah. like, fucking hell. He just fucking sitting back all smug as fuck. <laughs> Didn't disappoint. Smug as human in the world. Um, the Roosters, again, this is exactly what we talked about in the breakdown last year. Played against the Knights. And they started this way last year. Surely, they, they, like there are enough vets in that team to sort of, they started going, once the game started going AWOL for them, a couple, these vets have got to get them together and go like, the, the footy that you play at the back end of the season when Who's everyone's tired. Who's your vets in the Roosters' butt? Teddy. Mm. Um, Kiri. Kez. Even Toops. Like, Toops you know, is, I know yeah, Toops is on the wing. Um, but they just... But they're all in the wing. They're, they're playing sideways. But they're all in... Strange positions. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Cheese was on and off all the time. There wasn't really that much direction in the middle. Victor Radley you know, kept like on Victor getting Radley out. was getting in and out. He usually straightens up the attack. Robert, he was going out the back a fair bit. Is it, fair, something to say, to, TNT? Is it fair to say that they miss Warrior Hargreaves? Not really. I think they miss, miss his leadership. He'd be good to come off the bench. Mm. But like you're not, you're not going to get the same JWH from 2013, mm. 14, I, I 15, just, 16. I just mean in those moments that you obviously speak about. Where oh, yeah, to straighten them up. You, you no, want to get the group. group. They do, no, they do like in a certain way. They just miss, miss his presence. And he's going to come on and do those real hard things. But like Lindsay Collins and that can still do that. And so mm. can Lodge. But they yeah, want to ball play a lot. 
just fucking like usually they just want to go at you. The they roosters. started look. Everyone started looking, man. I'm alluding to it as well because I love the Butcher Brothers. Mm. The Butcher Brothers are running tentatively. But understand this: they're not big boys. The Butcher Brothers. Mm. They're not big back rolls. But they butcher, don't normally Egan, shy away from yeah, contact. Yeah, but Egan Butcher would be hard to fucking get over 95 kilos. I reckon. Mm. Maybe pushing 100. Fleece is fucking about 106, 107. Can hit a vet, and he would have taken that personal to him, the young kid. You're gonna fucking get put in your place. Fucking the other butcher, he was going at it as well. You're going against Kenny Bromwich. Mm. So both nullified. Two of the best left and right edges in the fucking game in the last 10 years. Kenny and fucking Felice. They get it twisted. And then you got fucking Bromwich and you got Wallace in the middle mm. with Marshall. That's a good middle. Yeah. And then you got Gilbert as your lock. Yeah. He can fucking hit too. Ray Stone come off the pine. And then you got Ray Stone pretty- who just wants to fucking hit everything. <laughs> just stay, get the ball yeah. out of his fucking hands, just make him tackle. It'd be better. We talked about the Raiders are going to make it tough for teams. Dolphins are going to make it tough. Their yeah, they, they, they will because they know teams, they, that's they? their identity. They're yeah. fucking tough. And that's what I think they wanted to really get out there and just send that message. It's like, you're not going to fucking bully us. We've got vets in our team that's going to stick up for the O'Sullivans and the Catoas and all these blokes. And you've got the guys on this fucking, you've got a decent back five. Yeah, you know, Brenko Lee doesn't fucking fuck around. They're just established he dudes, aren't He's they? Yeah. Sem- but like he, Brenko Lee's played Queensland. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like the left center, um, like even Isaka. Oz- Oz- He's a fucking more than Osaka. handy. Like Isaka. Yeah, Isaka. You and Aiken, Tessie New. Like, they're all like dudes that are proper dogs. They go at it. They're not going to fucking. They're men. They're established first graders. Yeah, that's what they are. The right? only, the only they're not kids, stars. The only but kids they're established that aren't first established graders. is the fucking halves. The halves. But yep. they will be established, you know. So like, don't look at their team in disrespect. And I don't think the Roosters did either. They just got fucking outplayed and out enthused. Yep, I agree. I think the Roosters just again started the year last year playing so- two sideways, trying to pretty their way to a victory because that's what you that's what happens at the back end of the year. I think it's just about they, Robo should know this better than anyone. Looks like you don't have to tell anyone. They're going to watch that video and go. That's that, not us. That game was there to be taken. They're gonna look at. They're gonna look at that and go. That's that, not us. It's that's like, just like us looking at the video. And go, that's not us. Yep. So just scrap it. Yep. Last game, your Tigers versus Titans. A uh, TNT. Yeah, down twenty two ten. I was just thinking of you when I was watching. I was like, suck shit. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the Tigers to win until you went for them. Credit to the Titans. They <laughs> Credit were. Credit to the Titans. No, they Shut were up. very clinical. Yeah. Very clinical. Yeah. Fucking clinical. <laughs> They thought the Tigers thought they were up thirty six nil after the first twelve minutes because they had good field position. <laughs> <laughs> it was only two nil. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the big one, big head scratcher for me. Uh, Mace is up. He started off like the bench. Fuck, what are you starting up from the bench for? I like that kid who, who started. Yeah, Simpkins. But Simpkins. maybe come off the bench. He's got a little bit more zip than Appy. Yeah, I think maybe Appy must have had. There has to be something like it. He's has a fucking be- sorry. He's a fucking captain. Yeah, but yeah, that's what I mean. Like he's even if he's injured, you've named him captain. They had all that ball to begin with, man. I fucking hundred percent. He gets one one of the big boys off. You would have got one A. They like yeah. They and it, even if it wasn't a big boy, they were so close on a number of occasions. By the time he'd come on, they'd lost all momentum. Yeah. Titans were on top of him, and he's looking around at all the middles, and they're all gassed. Mm. You needed to have him on to start the game when they had all the running. They Obviously, started, you can't yeah. predict that great great of a start, but. Because if they weren't going to come out like that and try and blast their middle, that's how the Tigers play. They come out fast and they play a lot of football. Like they just, they, I don't know, they just they def, they they put all their onus on their on their attack. And if they didn't get it, it was like, what was Plan B? You got a tackle, of course. Some good plays from Kieran Foran to fucking mm-hmm. Fafita. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like nice just, that's the difference play. because he hasn't had a ball play with him, Fafita, who yeah. can take that, who can square right up and cop that hit. Now he's doing that. All he's got to do is run those lines, which he does the best. He's fucking hard. He's hard to handle that kid. He's fucking a monster. You know, there's a silver lining. So obviously, Bo Formal had his fucking a career best year. He played Unreal mm. last year. Scored all these meat, all these meaties. A silver lining for not only the Titans but David Fafita's careers. He probably would have played on the right with Tanner Boyd. Yes. Now he goes over to the left, plays with Foz. Foz is going to absolutely bring out the best in him. He already seen when he played short before Fafita went through and probably could have scored even that far out if he wanted yeah. to run it. But he f- he flicked it to Phil Sami, um, who was good. When I was watching the Titans, I'm I'm watching him and going. They've recruited perfectly. Yeah. Like, I've got so much respect, and obviously I'm close with Foz. But him and Sam Verrills, when I look at the Titans, they're like a fucking... How's the best way to explain them? They're just so scat, and they're always like, Brimo, plenty of energy. Yeah. Jaden Campbell, plenty of energy. They just need a couple of old heads to go in, in crucial moments. Calm down. Keep like, David Fafita is so big and wants to run over everyone. Like, actually... Now, with all the energy that, and, and, and you know, let's harness this. Phil Sami, um, Jojo Fafita, I think, is going to be a real player. 
all these fucking live wires, and then you just get a couple of calming influences like Sam Verrill's in the middle, who, you know, he's going to give the ball Schema. scheme. And you got Foz there, who's going to just really steady the ship. He even lost his his shit for a little bit on off and goer there, um, but oh, he did, didn't he? Come fucking scream out of the yeah. line! What are you doing, Foz? He's, he's trying to that. he's trying to rip he's trying to rip his arm. Yeah, but out. then he come flying out on him because he was around the back, and yeah. he just went. That's where Dewey De- scored. Yeah, I was like, what are you doing, fuck you? And Dewey has gone back to Dewey too, by the way. Uh, Dewey. Now that the um, the, all the boys have come out and said it, um, but back, moving back on to the Tigers TNT. I thought Adam Dewey showed a little bit there at the game. He wanted he to run. Free, yeah. Brooks yeah. wanted to run. One of them has to sort of just like maybe ball play a little bit more. Brooks just still just makes mistakes that... Crucial you're mistakes. Like, you're like, at crucial times, hey. eh? I'm watching the game because I want to be... I think, like I said, I've, I've been... Um, when, when p- people have been critical of him, I've tried to stick up for him, but there's some moments that he makes and big fucking moments you're like, man, Tigers were just starting to get to some ascendancy there and he... Um, he fucked something. He, he fucked yeah, it up. Yeah, I don't know. Like, he just does something that seems to lose momentum or miss a tackle or drop a ball or something like that. So, I don't know. Tigers look pretty good. Clemmer looked pretty sharp. Um, yeah, Clemmer was Toy good. Toy Kamanu, like, the big guy. They look, was, fucking, they look little, strong, man. Yeah, he was a little bit off there. He wasn't yeah. his, his normal rampaging best. No, because there's Alex a difference between... Was yeah, Alex Twelve was good. I guess for a lot of work. He's just hunting for that try. 103 games, no try. Yeah, he was looking Jesus for Christ. a day. Oh, he was. I was he's going to ever gonna get one off a nine, it's from Appy. Yeah. I bet he gets one this year. Yeah, he'll get him one for sure. Um, I just think... The Tigers, they don't, need, they won't lose that much confidence from this. They just need. Nah, to make that, it's need, not panic need, stations. They need to make their one-on-one tackles. That's it. All those tries are savable. Making the right decisions in defence. So like they've been doing the right things. They look like they're pretty good. John Bateman's over here at the moment, so he might play off the bench for a couple of rounds. Well, they lost that Bloor. Did Bloor get injured again? HIA. HIA. Oh, yeah, okay. They lost thought, him early, so then that sort of threw it out. Then Tommy, had to come Tommy on Talau play. was a little bit busted on yes. that edge as well. He got dusted a couple of times towards the end. Brent Naden was pretty good. Naden was actually. good. Like they're, no, they're, they're fucking. They've improved massively. There's a, yeah, there's a team there. It was it was underwhelming because they're at Leichhardt I round one. Like, I just don't like the fact that you, you buy Appy and everything is just fucking all about Appy and, and then you start him off the bench. Yeah. Like they could have really, it could have been a fucking, it looked like a 12, 18 nil sort of start, momentum sort of field position, all that sort of shit. If Appy was on there, I reckon they could have consolidated. Yeah, I'm anyway. Good. All right, they'll be Next right. Next week. TNT, you're right. Health check. Uh, Tigers We're okay Early Good. days Boys were just a bit How did frantic. you feel Emotionally Pretty down <laughs> <laughs> Pretty down You're you, a diehard eh? You are you ain't, you every, You're not a, like a Part time supporter You're no, every No into it I'll get you a jersey time. I know some boys over there Do you You're Thanks, not going to Fucking wear it on this show <laughs> I was going to bring out The Western <laughs> Suburbs One if we won this week But um, no Look Saw enough there To, to think that you know, we're going to yeah. have a better season than what we did last yes. year. Yep, um, I agree. I mean, field position wise, a lot of key metrics in terms of um, you know meterage we made and possession and everything like that. I thought we were great. We just the stats th- allude to the Tigers winning. The biggest issue was the fact that we couldn't convert it into exactly. points. Yep. So exactly, that'll um, come. That'll come. So not too worried. All right, beautiful. All See right. you on preview round All two right. preview. Later, guys. Say. See you.